Hello. Uh, welcome to. Oh, I did it too quickly, didn't I? Yep, I got you. Hello. Right, <laughs> right. Thanks, 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 producer. Producer Patrick. Um, <laughs> sorry, and I also had the stream open in the background, so I just heard that twice. So good start, nice and slick. Uh, but in keeping with the Palace performance today, I think we're kind of, uh, you know, representing our club pretty well there. Um, so, yeah, apologies. No D today. He's on holiday. Once again, timing his absence perfectly. I had to do 5-0 uh, against Arsenal, and now I have to do 4-1 against Brighton. Uh, it's almost as if he right. wants me to hate him. Um, but there More. You go. So, <laughs> more, yeah. That's a good point. More. <laughs> but, um, but there you go. And that's that's the first... You. Yeah, that's the first time. Letting one in the first one. 20 seconds as well, Chris. That's mm -hmm. uh, Palace as yeah. well, isn't it? it? It is indeed, yeah. Um, as you can see, Patrick and Nick joining me today. Yeah, we're not very happy. Um, and, you know, we're kind of at a, a loss where to, to even begin to some degree. I know Patrick's very much got a, a few things on his mind. Um, <laughs> Nick has been a very angry boy. Um, uh, but I think there's also a bit of resignation in there as well. Um, that if, yes. Obviously, the game, the game we lost, the game was poor. You know, we were poor from the very, very start. But we were, we were beaten before kickoff. Like that, that lineup, the the reaction to losing Eze, the reaction to having Elise, which we'll get into the full picture of that. Oh. But him not being able to start, and our reaction to that, instead of being. Like it's never an opportunity. He's talked about it being an opportunity for somebody else, but it's an opportunity for the same old faces, isn't it? It's an opportunity for Jeff Schlupp to come in and jog around and contribute nothing. You know, it's an opportunity for Will Hughes to play number 10, where his lack of pace is massively exposed and he gets worse and worse throughout the game until he needs subbing. You know, it's all of those things. We know what's going to happen. We're predictable. We know we're predictable. But it's now so predictable that I can write in our chat an hour before kickoff that we're going to hand the initiative to Brighton, that we're going to sit back, we're going to try not to concede, but our defence is so bad we're going to concede, and they will probably end up being, I said, 3-1 to Brighton with a late goal from Palace. And, you know, other than that, that late, late goal from Brighton for the fourth, I'm 100% right. You know, an hour before kickoff. And I don't, what do I know? <laughs> you know, I'm just some guy who watches football. So if I can know that, you know, people who know, football people who scout football teams they they know exactly what to do against us it's no coincidence brighton scored early it's no coincidence brentford scored early it's it's no coincidence we conceded from a corner like i i i don't know what to say other than the fact we genuinely all of us are sitting here refreshing bbc twitter Facebook, whatever. We're refreshing every news site you can imagine while we're talking, just waiting for him to be set. Yep. Yep. I just, we just, all we want. That's all we want. I don't even care. I got to a point before where I was like, okay, I've, I want to be respectful to Roy Hodgson because over the course of managing Crystal Palace, he's racked up a whole bunch of games. We've, we've won some fantastic games. We've progressed the club to a certain degree. And when you stack his record up against other managers, you know, he's one of, one of the best. But but now, what have we got now? Bring back George Burley. <laughs> I, I started doing an exercise of writing the names of managers um, that I would rather have in charge of Palace right now. Um, and I got as far as David Brent, um, uh, of fictional manager from The Office, and, and stopped there. Because, like, what's the point? I literally, I, I'd take Mullery right now over, over Hodgson. It's like, it's... I have you mentioned no Mullery. Mm. You mentioned Mullery. Palace. I've been watching Palace for forty-eight years now, and it's as bad as Mullery days. That's as bad as it's got, and that was our uh, Nadir. Mm. I don't know when our Zenith was. Probably the date of Systems Trophy. Haha. -ha. But we're in a, a Nadir. It's it's just fucking awful. My son left there. in thirty-four minutes. Oh yeah, I heard. Uh, yeah, a bunch of the bunch of the guys left at thirty four. Some people lasted an hour. Uh, the, the, the away end was near empty by the end, wasn't it? Apart from the people who were angry enough to let the players know, and and, and probably talked about that a little bit. Appreciate there's a uh, there's people sort of dropping in and out who want to talk to us. I know Mason was sitting there from the very start. We've just lost him. We've got we've got Dan and somebody called Bollocks Three Thousand, which is a great name. Um, which um, Chris, which we'll try and get you guys on in a bit. Uh... 
That song drives, yeah. brother. <laughs> <laughs> But look, before we get anybody else on, I want to give both of you an opportunity. I started ranting. Obviously, I'm sure you guys want to do the same. Um, but I mean, Patrick, I'll start with you. You know, let's let's kind of set a bit of a tone here. All right. So first, I want to thank everybody who's tuned in. Uh, see all the people in the chat. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit like. We appreciate it. These off today. And as Chris said, he did it on purpose. Definitely planned. I was in I was in Aruba for a week and I came back for this nonsense. But he's apparently in Morocco, I believe. So good yeah. to see. Today's game. So I'll I'll go look at my phone. Around oh gosh, what time? I'm, uh, I'm trying to do the time. Not nine, eight thirty my time. So that's wrong. Wait, <laughs> in my head. It's what hard, time are they now? Yeah. Yeah, about eight thirty like... my time. So about what about one thirty your time? There was a league. Yeah. That's it. Is. There was a league. There was a league um, lineup. And when I saw it, my head almost exploded because the lineup said Henderson, Munoz, Anderson, Gahey, Mitchell, Richards, Hughes, Lerma, Ayu, Schlup, Mateta, and I said to myself, "You've got to be joking." Yeah. He's going to go with a back three of Richards, Anderson, Gahey, which is not did not work the last time he tried it. He's going to play. Lum and Hughes in midfield with Ayu and Schlupp White. And he puts Schlupp left and Ayu right, where normally I was on the other side. I couldn't believe the lineup. When we just signed a young midfielder who could have stepped right in for Richards, and I, I like Richards, but he's not a defensive midfielder or he's not even good in a back three. And he could have started Mateus Franza instead of starting Jeffrey Schlupp. I am sick mm -hmm. and tired of seeing Jeffrey Schlapp and, and, and Will Hughes on the football pitch for Palace. I'm sick of it. I'll support any player that puts on a Palace shirt. I can't watch those two play anymore. I cannot because they bring us nothing. All right. They're veterans that Roy likes. For the life of me, I couldn't take it. The match kicks off. We concede early. I was not even shocked. I didn't have any emotion. I didn't care. Again, an early goal against Palace is a regular thing. Roy Hodgson supposedly a defensive coach, good on set pieces. We've been the worst team in the league on set pieces. The worst. Uh, later on, good old, uh, is it Martin or Paul's nephew? Is it, is it Paul's, Paul, Martin's grandson, right? Uh, Nick, uh, the history yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Former Palace yeah. player, saw both of them play for Palace way back in when I was, when I was younger. Scores against Palace. Didn't, I didn't even pay attention. Didn't worry about it. The third goal goes in, and then I start effing. I was, I just started screaming, <laughs> F Hodgson, F this, F Parish. I, I was going mad. But then I said to myself, wait, hold on. 3 0, biggest rival. Maybe they'll fire him. So I'm saying to myself, I'll take a fourth. I'll take a fifth. I'll take, a, <laughs> I'll take as many goals as I can score. That's, how it, that's what it came to. I became the biggest Brighton fan today because Roy Hodgson has to go. Now, everyone knows me. I got. I used to get so much uh, flack in the chat last year when I said I didn't want him to come back. We didn't need him to come back. I was a massive Vieira fan. If you have somebody come back, why Hodgson? Because, honestly, we were going through a very tough stretch. We had 10 easy, I'll say it again, easy matches. Leicester, relegated. Leeds, relegated. Southampton, relegated. And then we had, like, West Ham and not in the forest or whatever. Anybody could have kept us up, but... He comes back. I hated it because I hated football. Chris and I will tell you, during uh, COVID, we did these watch-alongs that were death-alongs. I was It was the worst yeah. football I've ever seen in my life. The worst. The worst. You guys talk about Burley or, would you mention, Mullery. Mullery football was better than Hudson football during lo lockdown. And it's better than it is now. I don't care how bad Mullery was. He's still here. And I'm going to keep that up there. Is he gone yet for a while? I'll take it off now. That's actually not funny anymore. He's got to yeah. go. <laughs> and the thing is, he won't go. They must have panned about 10 times during the broadcast to Parrish and Bright with their stupid looks on their faces. And no, and Parrish will not sack him, all right? You said, mentioned about people leaving. Pe they said people left in 34th minute. You, they went to the stands. Every time they went to the stands, they were left panicked. There were more and more blue seats. Imagine going to Brighton. I mean, not far, obviously, but going to Brighton and having to leave at halftime because when your team is embarrassing yourself. Listen, man. Uh, yeah. One more. I mean, I'm almost done, Chris. I'm sorry. The last one I was just upset at a, 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 a Paddis loss was the Sunday game 
Yeah, we got promoted. Ian Holloway. What was it? You guys remember? Was it four one we lost for four nil? Remember? Really, it was against a Sunday Fulham. game. No, against no, Brighton. No, oh, against Brighton. Three nil. Holloway lost to three, Brighton. Three nil. Right. It was three nil. Yeah. Right. It was wasn't even. Yeah. It's only three nil. I just saw in the chat, uh, a chat that I'm in, that Brian has not scored four goals against Palace since 1951. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't even yeah. born then, and I'm old. <laughs> and I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, man. Having said all that, please, dear God, I'm not being funny. Please, can he please be fired? Or can he have the, have the strength, and I'll have respect for him, to walk? Just walk. Ian Holloway walked, yeah. right? Ian Holloway said, you know what? I can't do it. He walked. Please, Roy Hodgson, I cannot stand you. I've never been a fan. I'll respect you, though, if you would please walk. Because Parrish will not fire him because he doesn't have the guts. Yeah. Nick, he's all yours. Sorry. I'm done. I haven't really got a lot to add to that, apart from the <laughs> fact that um, the the only bright spell, the only bright thing about it is Walton, Walton came on about three months sooner than we'd expected. Uh, <laughs> Not to pay for this guy, though. Not to pay for this guy. He didn't and, come uh, here because... I did, did yeah. feel sorry for him because his mistake led to the third goal. I, I don't think he was expecting a challenge that quickly. Um, Henderson, let's get Johnson back in there, please, because I think he could have stopped a couple of those goals. Um, Anderson has been complaining to the press about um, Roy not playing the youngsters, and he's been rubbish since he said that. He's the one that went up to the fans. I've seen a video of it. The fans are kind of punching their chest saying, where's the heart? Now, we look good from about the 64th minute to the 69th minute. We actually <laughs> looked all right. And I said, that this is the lineup I would have started with, save for Gay because yeah. he came off injured. I mean, our, our luck with injuries. Um, talking about injuries, do you want to talk about that tweet that went out earlier, Chris? Yeah, it's a, it's as good a time as any, and again, apologies for those waiting to get on and, and, and say their piece. But I'll, I'll tell you what it was now. So, um, Phil on on Twitter, uh, Philly Concarney, if you follow him, um, just just said this. Uh, I won't say the first couple of words. I don't know if we're supposed to swear anymore. I know we do, but I'll, I'll try not to do it. So he said the messages the club doctor sent me just after Roy left and Vieira came in. I'm not sitting on them any longer. So he's saying that these messages were from the club doctor in relation to how different things were now that Patrick Vieira was manager and Roy had gone. He said the medical team feel the same. They now have a manager who listens to the medical team, allows modification of player loads depending on daily screening and there's better recruitment. The previous manager made a point about informing the press of every little issue. My remit when I was asked to join was to provide the same level of care as any club in Europe, and we do it despite the fact it's only Palace, don't know what that means, and the medical team can only work effectively if allowed to by a manager and with the players he has. And then he said, manager's training is what makes or breaks players. We have a decent setup in terms of how we rehab players, but it only works well if a manager is also compliant and reintegrates players correctly and allows load to be progressive with no sudden spikes in load. So some terminology in there, which we have to make assumptions about unless you're unless you're in the, the medical field. But basic, basically, he's saying what everybody thinks is the true around the injuries. The injuries at the club right now are as bad as they've ever been. And they were pretty bad under Roy, in Roy's stewardship before. And it's it's evidence that his methods, his views are outdated. He's even said in the press effectively words to, to, to the to the effect of. I know better. I know better than the medical staff will tell me this. I know better because I know footballers. I've had a CV in, man in management for over 40 years, nearly 50 years, whatever it is. I know better. I know when a player can play and I know when he can't. So when he's told you can't play Elise, he sticks him on the bench and brings him on after 45 minutes. Do you what, remember? In a game where you're already losing. You're already losing 3 0. Like, what do you. You want to turn it around then? You know. I, I don't understand. I don't, I, I don't understand how we could have a professional manager with this level of experience be this blinkered about the right and wrongs of, of managing footballers. And it can only be that he has not. He's just so far behind what the game is today. You know, that information, that data, you can't write it off because it didn't exist when you were cutting your teeth as a manager. 
And, you know, the game is what it is now. It's faster. It's harder. You know, he probably has the view that, you know, the ball was heavier back then and the kits were way, way you down a bit more and players were tougher or whatever. But the, the, the demands on footballers today, it's why it's a 25-man squad game. It's why so many subs are used. That's not to ben- necessarily specifically benefit the big teams. It's because the demands on players are higher than they've ever been. So this is just a tiny little thing, a tiny little sliver, which goes into the picture that is, it's not just a man- football manager's job to pick a team. Okay, they have a duty of care to your football club. Roy Hodgson today chose to put Michael Elise on the pitch at half time because he, for him, not for Palace, Sackable. not for the player. Sackable, Sackable yeah. Sackable. If you're, if you're, yeah. if you're, if you're Ridiculous. there for the club and you're there for the player, you go, yep. I got this wrong today. I'm not going to try and claw it back by pushing some kid who's the difference between us staying up and going down. I'm not. I'm not going to take that risk with him. It doesn't matter how much I want to. It's wrong. And if I get sacked because of it, I get sacked because of it. That's your duty as a manager, as an employer, employee of a football club. And he fails it every time in that. And his duty of care to this football club. Because Roy Hodgson remember, comes first. Do you remember a while ago, uh, Sacco, the defender Sacco, got loads of mm-hmm. shit for refusing to play because he felt he wasn't ready? Yep. Yep. Where, why can't well, now you see, don't you? Why is Elise coming on? Why isn't Elise saying, I, listen, mm. Gaffer, I really, I know he wants to play, but listen, Gaffer, I really no, but, don't want to, but, to play because I want to get properly fit. Now, if you look at our squad, we on paper, especially with the new signings, and they did well today, we have got a mustard squad who can be much higher up the table, but. Um, Elise and Eze have only played 17% of the games this season because the training methods and Roy knackering them both physically and mentally, because they weren't mentally there, is, I, I was going to swear, I'm going to swear, it's fucking up the team. Imagine the potential, well, the potential in this team is bloody incredible. And he's there bloody giving them Horlicks before the game. So they're asleep and letting a goal. The last four games we've let in goals in the first, second, and third minute. It used to be the end of games. Yeah. Well, I, I've lost count. I've lost count of the number of games we've started it's ridiculously slowly. But anyway, should we get some other voices on, Patrick? Yeah, uh, we'll have Chris on first. Chris, welcome. How are you, my friend? I think you put Jason you're, on. Them, you're you? on mute, I think. I was... Wait a minute. Uh, Wait a minute. Yeah. That's an interesting That's noise. That's an interesting noise. Oh, there you go. Can you I'm mute there. the stream and then we should be able to speak? There you go. Hey, there you go. Right, Chris. Can you hear Chris? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Good. Okay. Right, so you, that. Your thoughts your thoughts on that debacle today? Uh, yeah. Um, much like you ran the other day, I think you've well, most of it there, Patrick, like, um, I was just trying to work out who's the worst between Henderson and Anderson, but they were both disgraceful. I think um, I saw one of the Burnley goals, which bounced over, one of the goals against Burnley, which bounced over um, uh, Trafford, and it was a bit unfortunate, but he did try and get it, and I just, it just reminded me, I've seen a few goals now where Henderson has even attempted to move for it. It's uh, disturbing. Um I think it's at the point we looked at like Vieri, you think he's probably lost the dressing room now, especially what you're saying about Elise. I don't know how we're gonna who we're gonna get to replace him, who we can convince to come here with all that's going on. Um so that's worrying. But he's done it, he's done it before, he's got previous, like against Man United in the cup. He brought on Ezra when Ezra had been crocked, and I think the game had gone by that point. It might have been three nil again actually in the League Cup. And uh, it's not even surprising that he's Making his errors, like you're saying, ignoring, ignoring the physio's advice, trying to play his old football. It's 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 a uh, farce. I couldn't. I didn't even notice when Richards came off. Did he come off at half time? Was that for Elise? Who's that now? As a uh, Richards. He didn't come off. Gay, no, he went. He went, went to the centre back. Come he? off. Oh yes, no, yes, Richard, sorry, Richard yes, went to yes, centre half with Richard. Yes, went yeah with uh, Anderson. Right, yeah, yeah, he's he's going, going, yeah. yeah, But yeah, I mean, that obviously shows you. I didn't notice him very much, but. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just boring. I, I, don't, I don't see uh, how we're going to turn it around. If, if Elise is out for a while, we're in big, big trouble. 
Um, and as I said before the game, if we don't have those two, we're as bad as Sheffield United or Burnley. If we have one of them, we're probably around the Forest level, maybe. Uh, maybe Everton. And if you have both of them, we can probably give someone like Brighton or Everton the game. But not, uh, not Brighton, sorry, Brighton or Chelsea a game. Uh, but given um, his tactics, he just, like you say, he's switched off. Anderson doesn't compete for that corner. It just, it's so regular. Let, so let me stop you, Chris, for a second. Sorry. I'm actually reading. The, I don't know who put that. Would you put that in the chat, um, Nick or Chris? No, it's me. You're right. So I want to I wanna just read you the comments he made about injuries to uh, Gehi and uh, Olise. On injuries to Mark Gay on Michael Olise, very, dis very, very disappointing. With hindsight, I know people will say at 3 nothing, sorry, at 3 nil, down, why bring him on? We brought him on because we had the green light from the, midfield, from the medical people that he was able to play. Listen, man. Oh my God, I'm gonna go mad. I'm gonna. Uh... <laughs> no, seriously, that's that's no, maddening. No, you know, no, you know what? No one could have thought, apart from Roy Hodgson, that whole stadium. This looks like a good idea. Well, that's what I'm was, saying. We're gonna I'm, make it, it, we're gonna make it three. Idea. We're gonna win four three. Is like, uh, you know, is it like Paddy's going? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea, boss. Or Ray's going? Yeah, he'll be fine. <laughs> Get him on there. Like, I don't, I don't understand yeah. why you do <laughs> that. Um, and if you want to keep your job, I say it's selfish. It's like I have this is the absolute last chance to win the wild card, the Joker. I've nothing left, all in, and then just cross my fingers that somehow this team find their own system, their own tactics, their own ideas on how to attack. But it's not going to happen this year because it's not happened all season. Here. No, no, no. The, the thing is though, he didn't think that when we were up against Brentford at home. He didn't take Olise off when Olise had been injured before. He kept him on and got him hurt at the end, right at the end of the match. But now you're telling me now, the medical staff said, no, 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 seriously, I'm getting so freaking pissed off now at this guy's comments. I'm serious. He's like, he's brain dead. He can't be serious with these comments to the press. He can't. No. At 3 nil. nobody in the world besides Hodger thought, let's bring on Olise. He'll score four goals. He'll have two assists. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. You just, do to make, the, you just keep them on the bench. To make that point, Christ when the, when the medical team, when the medical, when the medical team give him that advice, they aren't really thinking. <laughs> well, they're saying like he can play a I, half. I don't believe they. Right? Ma I don't believe they thinking, even made that advice. I, I made, he made yeah, that advice. I don't believe him. I don't if, believe him. Honestly, if they I don't did, believe him. no, no, no. If they did, they did, right? But still, you're you're so correct. They're not thinking from the context of. He can play a half when you're chasing a game three 0 down away to Brighton, but like, but what sums Hodgson up to me is the last thing that he says in the comments that I chucked in the chat, right? He's talking about the banners, and this, this, this is like, this is Roy Hodgson's like motto. This is his statement to the world, right? It's dreams and hopes are one thing, but at the same time there is reality, and the reality today was, despite our best efforts, we were outplayed by a better team. Like, so it's like they're a better team. So we, we, we you know, it doesn't matter. We, we, we tried our best. They're a better team. I'm like, going to come in here, Chris. Pretty much every week. Every week. Chris, um, like, did Luton think that? Exactly my point. Today? Did that Luton go? Exactly. Yeah. I was going to say exactly that. Yeah. Roy has just been on Sky and said he's pleased with the heart and passion that we played within the second <laughs> half. Oh my God! <laughs> sorry, don't, 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 don't. I'm sorry, Nick. Please don't do that. Don't do that. So Chris, don't wind me up. Chris, what do you oh, make of the fact that Roy goes to Newcastle? We get beat four 0 and he says, "Oh well, we kind of expected that." Luton go there, all right. It ended up four all, but they've come from behind and they're winning four two. No, it's. it's I, I'm telling like you, wanna, you wanna... Go on. Go on. Chris as well, but go. <laughs> no, yeah, that's the problem. Be more yeah. specific, Nick. Yeah, Chris, um, you guys. <laughs> okay. No, um, I, I'm with you 100%. It's, uh, you've got to give it a go. Whoever you're playing, give it a go. And there's so many seasons now that we've made Everton season for them, or we've made Chelsea season, or Spurs this season, or like, like Arsenal women shit for me, go and play them. And they're just reading out the statistics before we play Brighton, before just about four double scores. They haven't scored for three games or something after three games at home. They're quite good at home, but they're not invincible. They always let goals in. They let Mateta score today. Um, who, to be fair, I like the bloke, but he didn't like him to win. He didn't like him to score against Sheffield United. So if he can get a goal today, um, you wonder if he'd actually gone for it, what could have happened? And then I know he might. I don't know. I don't even want to look at the comments because I just 
<laughs> chuck the laptop out the window. But like France uh, at I? least tried. Yeah. You know, France was like, I'll have an on range shot, I'll try and close up a play down. Some of the things he did were not very good. But he just thought, well, if he's on there, he's got some belief. We we rescued a ball from the corner flag, get a crossing from Anderson being looking like he's a better right winger than a fucking centre back. And <laughs> and yeah, we actually get a goal, believe it or not. And then you just see Brighton won't even come out first, you know, they just didn't even have to try today. They could have been doing some sort of hobby at the same time as beating us at football. It's embarrassing. We're lucky they showed us some mercy, really. I want to give you a little bit of a contrast, given we're talking about Roy's comments. So um, BBC interviewed Rob Edwards, the Luton manager and former Palace defender, um, after the game about his reaction to, to drawing 4-4 with Newcastle. And he said he's got a bit of a mixed reaction. He's really proud and pleased with the performance. We were brave. They came back quickly, and we, but we stayed composed and we didn't go under. That could have happened in this cauldron of an atmosphere. We even had a chance to win it at the end. It was an even game and a great game. He was then asked about their style of play, and he said to the players, this is the best way for us to get results. The, the players have really brought in. We've been this way before, but it suits who we are and what we are. It suits the whole football club to be honest. It gives us more threat and upsets the flow of opposition. Um, he, he goes on to talk about conceding four goals and mistakes will happen. They're human beings, right? And that kind of stuff, because he feels like they could have won the game without the mistakes. But right. that philosophy, okay, I, I'm just saying, and I know Luton is the kind of the cl club everyone's holding up right now because they've They've hit that purple patch of form. And quite frankly, they're dragging us back into everything, aren't they, with the way we're playing. But they, their squad, like man for man, is, one, is, is if not the weakest in the league with Sheffield United, it's, it's still up there, right? They get in quite regular injuries. They've had a horrible thing happen with, um, um, I've forgotten his name, Lockyer. Lockyer. Tom Lockyer. Yeah. yeah. But, but they're together. They've got a philosophy. Yeah. They've got a, a way of dealing with things. And they recognise, like pretty much every modern manager that sometimes attack is the best form of defence. And it's not just about attacking and going gung-ho, it's having a structure that recognises, like turning up today against Brighton at the Amex and seeing that we had no plan going forward. No You've got Mateta just running the entire third on his own in circles while Jeff jogs around on the left wing and IU falls over a lot. And that's our philosophy because we, had, we didn't have Eze, we didn't have Elise, so we're going to set up and, and just whatever will be, will be. And, and, and I Hambo, don't understand. See, and why? why, that's, why? That, that's the thing, though. See, under his first tenure, Hudson was, get the ball to Zaha, he'll do something. And he did it. For three, four seasons, kept us up. Now it's like, I have, I have Zaha times two. I have Eze and Olise. Get the ball to Olise. Get the ball to Eze. But that's not a plan. That's not a plan. Getting the ball to your best player should be no. something you do. But that's not, the, that's, not, that's not what top Premier League managers do. They, they they find ways to make other players. Everybody talked last year about how oh last year he made Eze better. No, he did not. Eze's a good player. Eze's always been a good player. He was coming off an injury last year. Maybe he was injured the year before under before Vieira. No, under Vieira because obviously we had Gallagher play most of that season instead of um, Eze. So he was coming back off a really long term injury that he got at the actually the end of uh, Hodgson's uh, uh, tenure right that that, that season. But the the thing that Okay, what I'll do is get the ball to Eze and Olise every game. And what happens when they're not when they're not available? Today, Arsenal. I, mean, I could go on. Like when they're not available, we are just absolutely rubbish. And the thing is, this cannot continue. And those comments are driving me. I mean, I'm coming with Nick. Nick said they drive me nuts. This man is deluded. He's so deluded. Anyway, sorry, uh, Chris. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Dan, and people are waiting in the, in the chat. Yeah. Any last yeah, thank you, you want to make about? Up today, I'm sorry. Um, no, just uh, I, I, I think everyone we agree that he probably should go, but he won't. I think we all know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but bring on, yeah. uh, what are they saying? Bring on Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would honestly, <laughs> I would, uh, if I was Parish, I'd go and get um, Texas money, and I would give uh, say goodbye to Roy. It's a shame his his whole career ends this way as manager, but just get someone in, even if it's Edward, just go and poach him, just. Doggy dog at the bottom there, just just ruin their chances. But he's not going to leave Luton for us, is he? That says a lot. But I mean, I mean, I said that. He's not going to leave Luton. No, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Chris. Thanks a lot, mate. We yeah. appreciate you. Thanks, Chris. Take yeah, care. Yeah. You know what? Um, I got to bring something up real quick. Um, do you two remember a young man named um Ben Nagel? 
I, yeah. I certainly do. I've heard I've heard of him. <laughs> so you know, I'm not a, I'm not a Twitter slash X person, but I ha- I followed him today on on Twitter, and um he he made the comment about you know how bad it was today, and people kept saying, well, there's no one there's no one available, you can't find. Him. Well, he named like Cooper, Potter, Lopetegui, and he said, go and pay Ipswich for McKenna because you can uh, we can afford his out clause. The point is, there's no excuse. There are actually managers <laughs> out there that are available. Parish needs to get his finger out and get one of them because under Hodgson, we're going only one direction and that's down. Yeah. So that excuse that there's nobody it, available doesn't fly anymore. It doesn't. It's been so, it's been so oh by the way, Villa have fallen up against Sheffield United, who we scraped to win against the other day, just for context. But after 29 minutes, just just to give it context, when people think that we're turning corners and right. we're brilliant, beating brilliant, absolute brilliant, rubbish, brilliant, yeah. we we, we exactly. conceded again in 20 seconds against them. We are we are <laughs> on the downturn and we have been for months, and the inaction is completely inexplicable. But that I just think that's worth some context. Villa are a very good side, but but 4 0 up in less than half an hour. That is how bad. Sheffield United are, so you know. Anyway, let's get let's get some others on and let's give get, him an opportunity. Get Dan, Dan on. You know what? I'll get since he since he's supposed to be a regular, even though he's at the pub today. I'll get I'll get Stan on for here. Hello, Stan. How are oh, you? But let me get let me get Dan on also because Dan was been for a long time. So, Dan, how are you, my friend? Any thoughts on today's game? Uh, I'm, doing I'm 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 baffled. <laughs> I'm 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 baffled, uh, but. I really, really, really want to swear, but you guys will get you guys will get cancelled if I if I say my truth. No, 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 no. Say my we're, we're not monetized. Cancelled. I think we need counselling. That's true. After watching that, <laughs> mate, it's, it's a fucking disgrace. It's an absolute shambolic disgrace. It's 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 fucking woeful. It's it's horrible. I'm I'm hating being a Palace fan at the moment, and and like it's it's just. I but I watched the game through gritted teeth, and 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 like it's just disgusting and there's no character there there's no belief um you know as soon as we lose as soon as we lose our two top players i.e lise and eze you know shit shit just hits the fan and it's just not the way forward you you know at least at least under different managers if we lost ayu and at least um at least say and eze then at least we would show some sort of character or some sort of belief it's just disgusting now, and and now is the time for him to just pull the trigger and just point the gun in his head and and just kill the cunt off. It's just absolutely, absolutely shambolic. <laughs> I love that now you're, you're saying that we haven't got that outlet, but Francis came on and 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 looked pretty decent. We'd be saying for weeks that you know, all right, he's not quite up to Eze and Elise's uh, standards yet, but he's that yeah. same type of player. You, why are we playing defensive against a team? In the last game, they got beat four 0 Yeah, but Brighton, Brighton at home, Brighton at home. Oh, all right. it's, this is, pains me to say this. It really, it really does. You know, I, I really don't want. You know, I'd rather spit. I'd rather spit on the concrete than say Brighton a decent team at home. But the, you, you give them credit where credit's due. You know what I mean? They they battered us today, and and yeah. we just looked. We just looked shit, and we have done all season and. <laughs> And if it wasn't for two or three worse teams off than us at the moment, then I would I would just go with the fact that that's it. I'm I'm buying a championship season ticket next year. Done. That game was lost before a ball was kicked. That game was lost before a ball was kicked. Listen, I'm well known on this platform for getting emotional, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This manager is ruining our football club. He's ruining the legacy that he had. He's ruining what he built beforehand. That is all finished as far as I'm concerned. He is fucking clueless. He is clueless. If he would have started Franca, Ozo, Wharton and a couple of the younger players together and we'd have lost 2-0 or 2-1, no one would be on here as angry as we all are at the moment. And as for our chairman... He's divided a fan base with his negligence. This is negligent. Employing Roy Hodgson. He's divided a fan base. I've seen us lose 4-0 to Scunthorpe and still all be united as a fan base. Do you know what I mean? I I remember going to Huddersfield and us losing 7-1 against Huddersfield. We were doing the fucking conquer (laughs) around the McAlpine Stadium. 
You know what I mean? It, 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 it's, just, it's just a joke. Like, honestly, that, it, like, I, I, I remember talking to you, Stan, years ago, like a couple of years ago, maybe, when yeah, we're, yeah. when when everything sort of like was turning and, and Parish and Texter were having their arguments and whatever. You know, I, I said it before, the man's a fraud. The man is a first-class fraud. You know what I mean? He, he's, he's sitting on his golden ticket, thinking happy fucking days, put, putting his finger up and the, putting his finger up his arsehole, smelling the shit that comes out and thinking it's coffee. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it, 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 we're just, we're just, uh, the club at the moment, the club at the moment is just frauds. It's just full of frauds. You know what I mean? And, and all, all, all the while, all the while we're paying our money and, and we're doing the right thing and we, you know, we're going to support our club. You know, he's just sitting there thinking happy days. You know what I mean? Something needs to be done. Something needs to be done. We need to, we need to step forward. We need to step forward as a fan base and support and we need to we need to go on a march, or we need to or we need to or we need to just stop going to the games, or or do whatever. You know, the the, the fans the fans do have a voice, and we have to speak. If yeah, if if something extravagant needs to happen like that, then we need to do that. Dan and Stan, I got I sort of cut you up. I got to go. I'm not going to rant again. I got to read this again. The, the, the Sky Sports comments about the banners on banners protesting against club board. I think Steve Parrish has done a fantastic job for the club. People's memory should be jogged. The club was in an awful state before he came. They turned them around and got us into the Premier League. The club is still there and fighting to stay there. We're not currently fighting, by the way, idiot. It is not for me to talk <laughs> about the, stru- the club structure. Where's the rest of it? I, I think we, we seem to have lost the rest of it. Do you want me to try and find it? Yeah, the rest right. of it, when he but says it's not, is... not for me to... T- yeah, go on. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You can read it if you have it. Yes, it's not for me to talk about club structure and ownership. If you ask me personally, as someone working for Steve Parrish and the club, I think it's very harsh that people are putting banners in that way and trying to blame him for the fact we lost to Brighton. I mean, completely missing the point, but I'll carry on. Exactly right. I'm going to carry on. This is because Roy has lost the, lost the plot completely, right? I'll carry yeah, on with it. He doesn't know. Like he thinks we're he thinks that the fans are doing this because, because just of, because we right. lost to Brighton. He doesn't exactly. think. He doesn't he realize doesn't we're doing this because of the whole season. The whole season. Right. Everything that the he does. Entire, yeah. Everything yeah. that he says. His whole attitude of running the football club as a manager very, is awful. He's Look, immediately it's ridiculous. Yeah, he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. I, I'll say I'll say my bit on ownership and stuff a, a bit later on because I'll let everybody get their opportunity to get get things off their chest, right? But just to to kind of finish off with his comments because I didn't get them all in the chat there. He said on some players confronting some Palace fans who were calling for more heart. And desire brace yourself patrick because this is what nick was talking about one thing you cannot criticize this club for is heart and desire at three nil <laughs> down to a to a top team playing extremely well yeah they've been playing really well they, they hadn't scored a goal in 2024 That's before fine, today man. roy but let's let's not worry about that um a top team playing extremely well the one thing we did not lack in the second half <laughs> let's ignore the first half the one thing we didn't lack in the second half was heart and desire if you aim criticism at, criticism at the team at management at the coaching staff it should be based on what has gone on on the field of play it is too simplistic to suggest that every time you lose a game it's because there's not enough heart and desire <laughs> the man has no idea he no, is yeah, absolutely yeah, you know gone and this is on Steve Parrish how can you let that guy say those comments and not say, you know what? He doesn't get it. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't get it. He doesn't understand what the fans are feeling. People say he's a, they say the Palace, he's a former Palace fan. He doesn't get Palace fans. He doesn't get us. How could you say that? It's not about the 4-1 today. It's not about the five niggas Arsenal. It's been an entire season. Of absolute rubbish football. When you're not deciding not to play certain players, playing others who aren't any good, and us having to watch. I flew over to watch three matches. I haven't seen a ticket. I live in America. I support the team. And I went there to watch a play West Ham, Liverpool, and Bournemouth. And after Bournemouth wanted the guy gone, he doesn't get it. I don't understand so, what he's talking about. So, Patrick. I'll just add to that for you. I've lived in Canada for 12 years. I came here when we were a championship team. So this is what me and you have done for this club, right? You're a season ticket holder. 
I set up CPFC Toronto, bruv. I set the fan group up, okay? Listen, no one knew about Palace in North America back in the day. You had to be a fan or a real, like... Right, exactly. Do you right. know what I mean? Right, who's that? Yeah, who's that? Right, exactly. Right? But do you know what I mean? I set up this fucking supporters club, bruv. You know, I go every fucking week to the Wheat Sheaf pub with four or five of us, right? And I get told by people at other fan groups that I'm not a proper fan and how I should support this football club, bruv. Because I'm questioning what yeah, this stupid terrible, chairman and stupid manager are doing. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I've had enough. I've had enough. What do you say, Stan, to people? I'm, I'm seeing fans of other clubs on Twitter saying that Palace fans are being harsh on Roy. Um, he's a legend. He's you know, not a we, legend we, right we should keep him there. We should keep him. We don't know how lucky we are to have such a legend of the game. They're repeating the interview on Sky now. The guy looks tired. He looks like Davros from Doctor Who. He looks so tired. <laughs> you know what, though? Yeah. Exterminate, exterminate, exterminate. Yes, please. <laughs> if he's a fan of this football club, he should walk. If he really cares Stand. about this Stand. football club. 100% behind you on that one. He should and I would walk. respect him so much more rather than getting fired that he walk because if he would walk i respect him but he's not going to do that yeah and if parry no. do you know what this is controversial whoever heard of parry before he bought this football club had anyone heard of him only those in the field of I mean, gak okay I see people right I so honestly, no. i'm actually debating is he actually one of us is he actually a fan because if you're a real fan of this football club do you not think Tony Bloom would have sacked Roy Hodgson by now? That's all I'm saying. It's a com it's a it's a confusing it's a confusing question because Tony Bloom wouldn't have done because he yeah. likes the fact that we're we're shit. Um, exactly. Look, I yeah, look, I, I think I'm saying I think you, you, look, was... you've got to ignore. You, you, yeah, I know what you mean. I'm just mucking around. You, you, you know, you've got to ignore the noise coming from other people, right? Because you know what it's yeah, like as that. a as a yeah. fan of a football club, right? You have to a understand fan of a football the club. club. They Nobody knows yeah. your club. They, Nobody like knows your you club do. like you do. Exactly. Nobody knows your players like you do. You think about the positive, like you think about how Palace fans viewed Wilf majority of the time before yeah. people started losing the plot. <laughs> but like, like everyone would go, "Oh, he's such a diver." You're like, "No, like I've seen every game he's played since he was like broke into the team at 16. He gets kicked." Day yeah. in, day out, all up the pitch every single week. You don't see that. You guys don't see that, so you don't know him. When we had AJ, it was like, you guys don't see the punishment he takes. He's not, yes, he wins penalties, but the punishment he takes running around the pitch and being kicked all over. You know, so you know those players. And it's the same with your managers. You know your, your managers. And when people look at Palace and they're like, former England manager Roy, he's such a gent of the game. They don't see. The, every week, the like, and he admits it. Roy says I, he's an arrogant man, and I'm telling you now, he is. His arrogance is his undoing right now because his his kind of impact on players, his impact on the game, his knowledge of the game, his knowledge. You know, he, he used to work with an encyclopedic knowledge of players, but he can't keep up. It's too it's too far gone now. He's he's now being given players that he's only seen on video. He hasn't got the knowledge anymore, so. His instincts are to play, you know, you think to think to him like a 19 year old is like a baby to him. You know, 34 year old Joel Ward is a, is a kid. So like his whole mindset is completely different. Yeah, I'll just finish the point. Like his mindset now is completely different to what it used to be. So they're able to go, Roy is this guy. But we're like, no, Roy is this guy. Roy is right. a guy hopelessly out of touch, old methods, doesn't understand players, doesn't understand modern squad management, doesn't rotate a squad, thinks that kids being given a chance is a bad thing. And I'll talk about Ozo in a bit as an example, but I'll let, I'll let you come back in, Stan. Stan, one second. I'm, well, I'm sorry. Uh, Dan, any, any last thoughts? I want to kind of move on with people waiting in the, uh, in the background. Any last yeah, thoughts? Just, just, Dan, a, just, a, just, a, just a little thing. Didn't it, the, the, when Roy Hodgson was last in charge, didn't we have the didn't we have the oldest age team in the Premier League? Hundred percent. And then Patrick and Vieira, then, and then Patrick, Vieira yeah. Yeah. Patrick Vieira brought through all the kids and that, and then we had the youngest youngest age team in the One Premier of the youngest, League. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, that answers that answers Chris's question. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Fuck no, fuck knows, mate. You know, up the palace, and I hope, <laughs> hope for, hope for better against Chelsea. You know what I mean? Thanks, thanks so much, Dan, for joining. We appreciate it. All right, all take right, care, mate. Then. All right, take bye, care, bye. have a good night. Yeah.
Oh, um, yeah. so, sorry, so, Dan, I want to just get, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead so just Dan. back to your point, I'm looking at this, right? So Brighton today, so going back to his, com his comments, like he's so out of touch, right? Brighton today, they weren't actually that good. They didn't get out of first or second gear, maybe. They, but we were so bad, right? Yeah. We were that bad. You know what they do that we don't? That manager plays the squad that he has and he puts the kids in and whatever, right? This, this, yeah. I don't even know what to call him anymore. You say, I say geezer. I heard it coming out your mouth. You're going to say, yeah, geezer. this geezer or this git or whatever it is. <laughs> he's like, honestly, like Will Hughes, bruv. He's not a <laughs> Premier League starter. He wasn't even bought to this club to start in the Premier League. He was bought to add a bit of depth to the squad. Schlup, my God, what did he do today? You know what? I was actually annoyed when they scored to make it 3-1 because 3-1 keeps him in a job. Do you know what I mean? You know what? So does Devin Neal today. He didn't. He wasn't getting fired after today. I don't care. Maybe Chelsea. He's not getting... I'll tell you. I mean, I just don't see him getting fired after today where it was... I'm with you. I wanted I wanted four or five. I told you when I started the stream, but I didn't. I just don't think that Parish have the guts, the guts to fire him. But how? He's we're going, lad. We are going down, boys. We are going down. I said that to you beginning of the year, and you laughed at me. Remember I said that, and you said, "Oh, we're not going down." Remember that I said beginning of the season under Watson we go down. You're like, "No, we're not going to go," because I don't have any faith in the man. So, but as Trey says right here, is he gone yet? Anybody know? He no, he hasn't. No, no I'll, I'll keep looking. That's that's why I'm distracted. I'm constantly I refreshing. Know. All right, let me bring let me bring Tim B on. Tim was on uh, when I was in Aruba. Hello, Tim. How are you? Nice one, Tim. Hello. Welcome. Thoughts on hey. whatever. I mean, on Palace, on life, on Hodgson. I would drive <laughs> that man to fucking dignitas tomorrow for free. <laughs> <laughs> Are we talking about Parish or Roy? Uh, Roy. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, we, we we've got we got a friendly in Switzerland for you, Roy. Um, it's with another yeah. team. <laughs> but I mean, oh god. I mean, yeah, it's very easy. I to respect Roy for his career. He has done some amazing things. Um, the um. Yeah, so yeah, so he revolutionised Scandinavian football, but we're not in Scandinavia, and this isn't the 1980s anymore. That whole approach of like, as soon as, as soon as you saw the lineup today, you knew exactly what he was going to try and do. It's eleven men fucking parking the bus and giving up possession. Brighton play possession-based football. Do not give them fucking possession. Yeah, you don't have to do that. <laughs> don't do it anyway. It's like they're way ahead of you, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like it's a recipe for disaster. Those those tactics do not work anymore. You know, it's gone. Those days are gone. On top of which, we've bought all these players over the last year or two, specifically to play possession-based football with the era. Like we've got. A load of ballers, really, and we are not using their skills at all. So not only are we not exactly. playing to our own strengths, we are playing to Brighton's. How the hell is that supposed to work? It's Tim, silence. <laughs> no, we Sam, don't have an answer. Sam, <laughs> Sam made a great point, you know. Had he started Wharton today and France and Ozo, and we lost 4-1, Fabian said, you know what? And I thought today, I thought France had a really good second half when he was on was there. Excellent. I thought Wharton... A few mistakes, but you can see the talent. He can see the kick. He's the field 19 great. years old. Yeah, he, he scans the field. He scans the field. He makes a progressive passes. He gets stuck in. You can see it. Uh, the, the, the Munoz, the right back, again, a little shaky, but again, you see things there. And again, we've seen Ozo. So had he just had the, the guts to play the kids and then to lose, then you don't use only say that he doesn't get injured. Do you know what I mean? But the way he did today is so frustrating because it's the same old same old. He won't change. When I was when he was England manager, I hated Hodgson because England was so boring. We had a talented group of players, and it was poor. He came to Palace and agreed. Post that manager, 
he did a great job. We'd lost what we we lost the first four under the board, then I guess we lost the next three, then we had lost the first seven, then we got the win against Chelsea, and then from there, a great job. But after that, I hated football under Hodgson again because he went back to the same old what they call it. Nick calls it Roy Ball. People call it. I hate Roy Ball. It's Shit very ball. negative. Yeah, well, you weren't calling it shit ball last year, mate. You were calling it. You were calling it one ball too. <laughs> you loved it. You, my friend, have uh, you, have, you have you have. He's turning you on you now, Nick. Careful. Don't point at me. I don't have a for anything. young man. Well, I can go back to the chat and I'll. I got receipts on you saying how great Roy Ball Two is. We've got. Oh. We've got. Oh, don't don't you start. Oh, he's he's, he's, he's had this Connor. stored up a while, hasn't he? He's had, he's yeah, had this, have, this beef stored anyway, up a sorry, while. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so Tim, go back. You 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 you're, you're the for my yeah. side. I didn't mean to go off. I mean, the we've all right. been Palace fans for a long time. I mean, my first games were under Mullery at his worst when I was a little kid, and I kept coming back. We have Tim. all sat through some absolute dog shit in that time. First, first team I supported Palace team is this one. Yeah. Were the Glazers back then? This is the first my dad ever bought yeah, me when I was exactly. a kid. This one. I mean, you know none I mean? of us has like really high expectations, but it's got to be better than this. Yeah, and that's the whole point, isn't it? That's the whole thing with Roy not getting it. It's it's not about us having unrealistic expectations. It's about us just wanting something different, not having to accept that we should be scared of every team that we play, not having yeah. to accept that we play the, the, all the senior players ahead of all the young players because they're senior players. You know, can I, I, I want to take this opportunity. Look at David Ozo, right? So we'd all agree that he's featured a bit under Roy and... The more he plays, the better he looks. You know, at 18 years old, he looks like he's got a real chance of playing Premier League football and, and we'll, we'll see how good he gets, right? Tell me this. If there's injuries, if there's no injuries in our squad this season, right? Obviously, it's not going to happen with the way Roy manages a squad. But let's say for, for, for argument's sake, we don't get any injuries in the entire squad all season. Ozo never makes a match day squad. OK, mm. and it means exactly. next season he's starting at the point that he started this season as next season. A year would have gone by and he would not have featured in the squad. He bet he would have maybe made a bench um, in the League Cup in the first sort of first round. You know, we're, we're in. But like and it's the same for pretty much every other young player. And people will go, no, look, Roy gave him a chance. He was forced every time right. he's been forced. And every time a player comes back, they're straight out the side. When Ozo came in and played against Man City for 50-odd minutes, he was sensational. One of the best he players was. on the pitch. He should have started the next game. There's no reason to take him out, but he took him out. And and that's Roy. He's a, he's a waste of time uh, not at a club like enough. us. They're not young enough to know fine wine and what Roy likes. Uh, can I ask him a question before he goes? What, what, we've got, we've got Chelsea coming, coming up. What do you think... How febrile do you think the atmosphere is going to be against Chelsea? Because... We look at a lot of Twitter. A lot of fans at the ground don't. A lot of fans at the ground don't seem to be as agitated as, as we are on the social media. What do you think it's going to be like there, Tim? I I don't see it going well. I really don't see it going well. Um, I mean, especially, I mean, we've been extremely reliant on, say, like the, the HF for sort of atmosphere and all the rest of it. They're definitely on the turn, you know, you won't see a lot of positivity coming out of there. It's, yeah. I, I think it, things are headed in a very toxic direction. In the away end, when they held up the banner, apparently a, a palace steward was holding up one side of it. So maybe there's going to be a bit of a coup inside the club. <laughs> apparently some fans are telling them to take it down, though, as well. So Yeah, I heard that. That's what I mean. Well, well, I going mean, back it, to Hamble's I'm sorry, Tim. We going back to Hamble's point about the you know the young players. Malcolm Abue had 13 appearances this season on the bench. Did not play one Premier League minute. His first game today for Molenbeek, he had an assist as a sub. They drew two two. His yeah. first match as a sub. Now listen, I'm not comparing the Belgian first division to the Premier League. My point is, he was never even given a minute on the pitch by Roy Hodgson, and that's with Olise. And Raksaki both been injured on that on that right side. Where's Raksaki today? Because he's back in training, no? Who okay, cares? He's not going to play. He's not going to play at the So it doesn't matter. But I'm, I'm being okay. Uh, apparently, yeah, he's training, but he's not ready to go. He'll be he'll put a bench on uh, Monday, a stand to not play. I've just seen on Twitter from Gary Taphouse. Is he gone yet? Um, 
Uh, no, no, this is this is worse. Well, it's just as bad. Gary Taphouse has said Roy Hodgson confirms that the Eze scan shows a tear in his muscle, so go. he's unlikely to feature against Chelsea. He's also mm -hmm. concerned about the gay injury, and he's confirmed medical staff yeah. gave the green light for Elise to play in the second half. Um, I'm fucking sick of him blaming everybody but himself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sick, spot on. Do you know what I mean? Like, just admit that you're not up to it and walk. Mm. Or admit no. that it was my decision to put him on and I made a mistake. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I thought he'd be okay. They said, but, you know, I made a mistake. He, he can't even admit because there's no way that makes sense at 3 0. It doesn't make sense. If he was 100% fit, I would actually say, you know what? He came off the last game injured. I would kind of, you know, I'd leave him out for, till till I'll give him another week and a few, another 10 days to get fit for Chelsea. It does, it didn't make any sense. Again, responsibility. That's Parrish's problem. And that is Stephanie Hodgson. Take but, responsibility for your actions for not doing it. Going back to his comment about the banners are harsh. The banner is <laughs> aimed at Parrish because one, he employs him and continues to employ him. And two, because we could have not been in this situation had he bought some players in the summer and not going to spend 20 million on Dean Henderson. And today, Henderson was shocking. But but Stan, I'm going to fight back on that thing. I'm, I'm sorry. The, the buying players is not the issue for this club. It's not because Hodgson doesn't play players. I'm sorry. Buying players would not solve what's going on. The problem is the manager and the owner. Buying players, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I've heard that too many times because he has proven historically he will not play new players. He didn't want to play M Maya. He didn't play Camarasa. Uh, and he, you know, he, he hasn't, he, he, he doesn't. No, you know what? That That is not the issue. Okay. The issue is he does not play. He does not use his squad. He just wants to pick okay. the players that he thinks are good. And then I'll drive him to the ground. And then all of a sudden, when someone's injured, okay, thank you, uh, Anne Wambasaka. Thank you, Tariq Mitchell. Thank you, David Ozo. Injuries, yes. But giving that man a squad is an absolute waste of time. So from that standpoint, I'm not going to go parish for that because I'm telling you right now, he does not use his squad. Sorry. Okay. I, I, I agree with some of what you've said there. And yes, he does not use the squad, but listen, I just don't know, man. I just don't see how um, he's like, I, I don't see how this guy is employing Roy Hudson. I just don't understand how he's still the manager of this football club. You know but what? His track record stand. How long did he keep hold of Pardew, who I'd gladly welcome back, actually? How long did I he keep hold He's too. got a track record too. of not getting rid of people. He got rid of I'll, the I'll go, lads. I'm, I'm going out for some uh, I'm going out for some real entertainment tonight, so I need to have a shower and stuff. Um yeah. Beth McGreen, I'll be watching Joy Ria. Nice to join everybody. Cheers. Wish I was in Morocco with DR. Yeah. Um, Cheers. Yeah. Up the palace and <laughs> yeah. be signs at the bench on on uh, Monday week, please. Yeah, All sure. Right, take um, nice can one. I? Cheers, Nick. I also, I mean, it's it's really suspicious. I'm not going out with Nick just to make it clear, but I have to I have to jump in a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. And there's tons of you still wanting to talk, so it's really on Patrick yeah. how long he wants to I'll, run this. I'll, for. I'll stay on. I'll stay on. I don't care. Uh, I'll but, for but like, just before I go, like, I just. You know, first of all, I really appreciate everyone joining. It's been it's been amazing to see. But I, I think this reflects how difficult we are in a difficult position we're in right now. I think we still care still care about this club immensely for us all to be sitting here talking about it so much. But I feel so disillusioned with it right now. I, I the most distant I've ever felt. You know, I sat I sat down it like I would usually I'd be in the ground today, right? I went to a every game home and away for God knows how long. But bright and away, I'd never, I'd never miss it. But I've just, it's gone. Whatever we used to drive me to put myself through it, it's just gone now. And until Hodgson goes, it won't come back. It just won't. And I know so many people are feeling the same thing. And I, and I want to say, you know, Parrish has to bear the criticism to, to a degree as well. But he's, you know, he's also trying to back a, a manager because he's right now, Hodgson's his manager, you know, and, and unless he's made the decision to kick him, he's got to back him. So he's got to speak positively. And he's doing all the things that he ever used to do. He speaks positively in the press. He writes a positive spin in his program notes, you know, and he's gone out and he's spent money. Palace were the biggest spenders in the in the transfer window. And we never exactly. do that in January, right? Exactly. So you know something's up. You know he's, he knows something's up. He's not an idiot, right? You know, I've met the guy. He's not an idiot. He's a... Mm -hmm 
very very smart man but like parish yeah but he's trying you know but he's in this he's in this position right now of he's flogging a dead horse you know there yeah. there is no excusing keeping roy hodgson and i and i mean beyond like this is months months overdue like the signs have been there you can't ignore the signs and i think you know his fingers have got burnt with a couple of managerial appointments um but you know you can't keep just trying to do things and trying to kick it over this short-term thing all the time roy hodgson's a short-term appointment you know loans and things like that are short-term solutions to problems and if you don't put we signed a right back finally but it took seven years seven years of knowing we needed one and we still haven't got competition at left back and you're not and you're allowing somebody like roy hodgson to dictate to you that actually at the start of the season ward and klein are perfectly acceptable uh, you know options at right back nobody thinks that no one thinks that apart from roy so anyway i could go on forever and i'm not going to because i have to go but <laughs> I, I would just say this like it's really hard in these circumstances not to turn on every aspect of the club. But I'm still there. I'm still with the club. I still want the best for Crystal Palace. The best for Crystal Palace is that Roy Hodgson goes. And I don't want to hate him, but honestly, I do. And I'll, I'll, the last thing I'll say is Brighton saying, stand up if you hate Palace. And, and I'm not even joking. Instinctively, I started to stand up. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's sitting here in front of a screen. Me too. I'm like... Me too. Oh no! Wait, <laughs> no, no! I'm not. I'm, you know, I haven't gone that far yet, but I'm so close to it. Um, so anyway, yeah, keep talking, guys. Keep getting it off your chest and feeling better. Patrick, you're going to take the take the reins. I will. Um, Cheers, yeah, Emma. appreciate it. Well, well, mate, appreciate you. Cheers. Man. Take Cheers. care, all. Yeah, See ya. Bye bye. Tim, any Tim, any uh, any last thoughts on today's? Uh... Yeah. Well, the thing is, I mean, nobody wants to be going away to Brighton holding up banners criticizing the club nobody wants to be walking out at half time when we're playing fucking brighton away i mean like but under the circumstances i totally understand it and can't even criticize that yeah i agree as, mate. as dignified I... as it may be you know but like you, you can't even criticize people doing that I agree. Tim, as always, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thank you for being a guest. And I'll we'll talk to you soon, all right? Up the palace. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, nice. Take care. Bye -bye. Uh, so we'll, I'll get Tim and Patrick on at the same time. Mm -hmm. Cool. Tim, Patrick, how are you? How you guys doing? I want to say hi to, to, to you guys. Um, good to see you both. Patrick knows how pissed i am so i yeah, wanted to say on eagle eye eagle eye football stream i wanted to uh, you're, you're on mute by the way i i wanted to say hi to you guys before uh, before i i hit a rant and patrick if you want to go, go first before oh, i no. before tim, i hit my rant tim i interrupted you on eagle eye you go you're the floor is yours first i'll have a right. shot at parish after you so this is this is the thing i am furious and, and here's the reason why. I don't think, I think it's being generous to Roy to say he's clueless. That is not clueless. That is gaslighting. There is a difference. You can't do that. I, I mean, Roy, I, I really like Roy, but that is, that is gaslighting. That is not okay. Do not piss on my leg and tell me it's raining. That's not what this is. That's not what it is. <laughs> this team did not show up. The team didn't show up. It was dead before we even had a kick of the ball because of that lineup. And I don't think it's a mistake that when we did get Ahamada in, we got Franza in, and Franza had to go. The confidence of this I, I don't know if they've abandoned Roy or not, um, but the confidence on that pitch is nowhere. It's gone. That is not a confident team out there. They are not playing. There are no patterns of play. Nobody believes if that is not a sign that he has to go, I don't know what is. 
I don't want it to end like this for Roy. I everybody knows that I like. I don't want it to end like this. But you can't do that, Roy. You can't do that. I I, I get that this is a difficult job and a difficult position, but that is that is not okay. It is not okay to be gaslighting the fan base. You know, there's a lot of fans who've been fans of Palace longer than I have, and that we. I, I think you could be a Palace fan for one day, and we deserve better than that. We deserve better than that. That is not okay. So that really pissed me off. I just, sorry, I had to get that one off. There's more to talk about, but let me stop and, and let Patrick go. It just pissed me off, Patrick. I was just, I, and I don't, I don't get like this. I don't like getting like this, but it really just set me off. So, um, Last year, everybody knows that little by my name, it used to say Roy's number one fan. Still am. But obviously, I also came to the realization he definitely needs to go. But I look at it as just a bigger issue. Roy is going to do what Roy is going to do. We can get frustrated. We can we, we, we can cuss. We can do all this stuff. The bigger issue is the man that's allowing him to do it. I said this on Eagle Lab. If you spend... 68 million, 26, whatever Franco was. And you're not instructing him, this instructing Roy to play him, you're more you're more culpable than the manager. If you know Elise, who's dr dragging around one dead leg, can get hurt, you don't allow Roy to allow him on the bus to play in the damn game. Facts. So so as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to forget what Roy did a few years ago to help us. I'm not. I'm seeing things on Twitter very disrespectful. You got to – I understand people are angry at him, but look, I'm not going to make any excuses for him. He's an intelligent guy, but the game's passed him by. So that I'm, I'm strictly looking at Parrish. We're on Peacock over here in the States, and I'm assuming that's how – if you watch the game, Patrick, that's how you watched it, that he's on his damn cell phone. Every time the camera flashes back to him, he's on his cell phone. Well, I know you're not calling another manager. So I don't know what the hell you're doing. Probably now, asking Susan to read out on a date again or something. Right, right. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? I said a few years ago, and I got a lot of flack, ton of it. Like, I never bought this dude's act. And I criticized they didn't spend money. I really criticized. He brought in those two jackasses that own the Sixers. And Stan, I know you kind of are 50 50 with them too. I'm telling you, call anyone or any notable journalist in the Philadelphia area. It's not just will, Philadelphia, Patrick. We are any US fan yeah, has, yeah. has seen that. They're, they're, they are they what they're they're borderline, borderline fraudulent. They're trying to get an arena built for the Sixers in downtown Philadelphia. And the way it's been worded out, they would just walk away from the loan and the city would have to eat it. So as far as I'm concerned, if C. Parrish, who brought those two clowns into the club and he didn't do his homework, then you're just doing it for one big fat paycheck. And I'm sorry. I think he's checked out. I want to say I don't think he cares if he gets relegated or not, but you just spent $30 million. Oh, yeah. I'm not I'm not sure if I buy my own argument on that. But to me, I got a theory that's I said it on Eagle Eye. I think they are going to try to sell the club, and I think they're going to try to pull a Sunderland and take the parachute money if we go down. That that that's what happened to Sunderland when they went down. They sold uh that, that clown American Ellis Short sold the club. They he, and he took the parachute money. Yeah, but so, financially, Patrick, that destroys them. The value of the club goes down tremendously. You go from Premier League to the Championship. So why would you do that? Yeah, you you're right. You need money to get back up. You know what I mean? But what I'm saying is no. those two, those two Americans would do something like that. I so, listen. Go ahead. I've I, I, I got I, to say, I, go on, Patrick. Go ahead, Stan. No, go ahead, Stan. Go ahead. Listen. Say what you want about Harrison Blitzer. Listen. All I'm saying is, between them and Textar. There's enough money to support his football club. I don't think that one of them would come in and be the chairman and whatever. They would probably employ someone like a general manager who maybe might actually know what they're doing. Okay. Because right. at this moment in time, 
our chairman is not he's clueless right collecting a paycheck that's what mm -hmm. he's doing he's, he's collecting he's collecting a paycheck and as long yeah. as palace are a premier league club which they won't be for much longer i can tell you that they won't be for much longer um he's sitting on 60 million quid and when he sells it he's he's quids in and who cares to your roy hodgson point i understand where you're coming from and i respect your mm -hmm. comment but i strongly strongly disagree the man is not this savior of Crystal Palace, he came in, da, da, da. Roy Hodgson loves a pound note. It's well known he loves a pound note. If he was such a saviour, like I've said here before, he would have walked by now. He's 76 years old. He should be living in Barbados, drinking pina coladas on a beach, okay? That's where he is. You know what? He saved us for one, maybe two seasons. After that, it was diabolical, mate. It was diabolical. And he was here because the club kept paying him money. Well, I'm going to counter you just on his first run. And his third year, the second year when we got Batuai, we, we finished with the most Premier League wins we've had. And that was pretty good attack in football. The third and fourth year, you're right. It was dreadful. But... I think Palace's budget was 10 cents. But I'm not going to get on here to defend Roy Hodgson because the guy's clearly lost it. Every youngster should have been playing in that second half, except Elise. Um, did Hamada even touch the ball when he came on? Yeah, but, he and, did, but not not much. And I tell you, um, we if we go down, it's perish because Roy's making the players worse, not better. Um, uh, Chris Richards last year – under Vieira, had, what, four games with Gahey, and he was locking everybody down. It didn't seem to be a, a problem with his headers or uh, defending in the box. Now I'm putting James Tompkins ahead of him. After nah, the no, way. Oh, stop uh, it. Uh, no, 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 but I'm, no, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defend Chris Richards because he's playing out of position. If you oh, play national, national, national team. I'm talking about a center when he played center back. But he was fine today. No, he was fine. No, 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 no. He was fine today. The problem with Chris Richards is that you're playing him in a three that he's not used to playing in. He plays in a two his whole career. He has played right back in Germany, but he's not really a right back. He's a center half in a two. If you played football, playing with in a two versus a three is vastly different. It is. Then he played him at defensive midfield, which he's never played in his entire life. In his life, he never played that position before. So you want to blame Chris Richards down his downplay? Blame it on Roy Hodgson, but putting well, him in he, but I'm doing he had options. He's had right. options. He had plays they could Absolutely. put there. Yeah, so, I, I mean, listen, I, 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 I that, but I, I got to defend Richards because, I'm sorry, Richards has been played out of position, and then he's taken a lot of fact. He's not been great. He was not great on the header against Arsenal. I'll give you that. But that was one play. He you was get fine for making one pass. Yeah, I, I, it, he it was fine. Hard, you know? He wasn't he's the not, problem today. He's not. He's not he wasn't good the with problem today. That's for sure. No, he he was. He's not good with the ball at his feet. But he's I think fine. if he plays in a two, Patrick, he's right. fine. Did you not see him against United last season? He was. No, I, but that's what I'm talking. But see, that's what I'm talking about. His form. His form has gone. We, we can agree to disagree. The point of the matter is the bigger issue. Because and that's a good thing about talking about football because we can all have different points we For can sure. agree to disagree with each other me and patrick disagree 50 percent of the time it used to be 100 so i guess i'm starting yeah, to come yeah. up we get we're but getting better point, we definitely get better. but the point the point is and i'm going to end it on this because i'm a philadelphia so we're known to be just a bit fanatical i'm telling you if the fans in selhurst on tuesday don't go off on that bastard uh pardon the expression i'm gonna say it, that bastard fraudulent chairman and if get and it should not have to come from the HF. If you got any balls at all or guts, I'm I'm, I'm not going to go down that road. You pull a West Ham, you pull a Everton, and you make Steve Parrish run out of that place and say, "Oh shit!" And that's what it's come down to. You want because we can all get up here. We live in the states. We can all come on these, you know, back of the nest. We can get on five year all those other platforms. Complain, bitch, moan. But if you're in Selhurst Park, I know Patrick's going to counter this in a second. But if you're in Selhurst Park and you're worried about some guy telling you stop complaining, kick rocks. You pay your hard-earned money, your season ticket holders, you fly over there, and some dude will tell you no? Oh, hell no.
that the fans got to come together. If you want Parrish out, you want that. You literally got to go that fanatical. And I hate to even talk like that because that's been like that borderline in trouble area. But look, Everton's fans today, they hijacked the podcast, not a podcast. Uh, what was it? Uh, they um Some protest they did. Well, uh, Peter Crouch was doing, I think it was some pregame show on one. I don't, know, I don't know if it was BBC or one of those channels over there. And they could not move those people. That's what you got to do. Because that's the only way this clown's going to understand it. I've been saying it for years. But I don't know, understand the Crystal Palace fan base. Patrick, please explain to me why this thing, or Stan, please explain to me why this thing is splintered five different ways. I think that's, I think that's uh, just most fan bases. I mean, I understand. Listen, uh, Stan will, will, will tell you, I was a massive Parrish fan and defended mm-hmm. him for a long time. He only lost when he, when he fought Vieira. I, thought it was, uh, I don't think he should have fought Vieira. But as far as him, what he did to save the cup, I thought that was great. But like just the last year or so, he's made poor decision after poor decision. You didn't have to hire Hodgson. But if you did, let's just say, for argument's sake, because I'm trying to get really get past the fact that, he, that people want to give him all his credit for the last 10 games. When the season ended, do not bring him back. You didn't have to do that. There were manager options out there he could have brought in because you had re- you redid the squad. You changed it to be a more progressive, younger squad. As I mentioned before, ball playing center halves, Olise, Eze, Edward as a striker. You know, you had younger players coming through the academy you could bring up, you know, Rack Saki and Ozo and Adam Arola, you know, etc. To bring in a 76 manager back again makes no sense. You know, so at this point now, I totally get people getting on Parish, right? I get that. But it's hard to make decisions on a day-to-day basis. He's getting Eze injured. He's getting Olise injured. He's not playing France. He's not playing Ahamada. He's not, I'm not going to say Wharton and New York, they're brand new, obviously, you know. He's the one making the day-to-day decisions. And then, as Tim said, then he gaslights the fan with those comments after the game. That's pure gaslighting. Parish, so for Parish me, does the same I thing. get Parish is a problem. Parish is a massive problem, but like Tim will tell you, he won't go anywhere for the next year at minimum. That takes, to sell a club takes a long time. He's got to get right. past the Parish part. He's got to start making better decisions. And the first one is to get rid of Hardson today and bring somebody in. And at this point, I don't care who that is. I don't care if it's Patty, if it's Cooper, McKenna. I do not care because no one could be worse than Roy Hodgson right now. So I defy you to defend someone that would be worse. And, I, and people said Alan Pardew wouldn't be worse if he came I'll back. Take I, I'll take you know him. I'll take him. And I hate him. No one the could end. be worse. Right. I, I did Sam, me and you both. I went to the F Cup final. I had cried right. after that game. We was that close to winning the FA Cup. But I appreciate he got us to that final. I thought he did a poor job managing it, especially the extra time when we were up a man. But again, but yeah, you know. But, but this guy right now is way past it and doesn't get it. And the comments he makes match after match after match show me he doesn't get it and will not change. So I don't Harris, think he doesn't get it. I don't think he doesn't get it, Patrick. Okay, I've ahead. started I've started to think that he's he's just he's doing it on purpose. Yeah, I mean I, right. I, okay. I or Fair at enough. least at least today. Maybe maybe okay. not always, but at least today. Go on, Stan. So Patrick, I think what most of what you say is right. Thank One you. thing. No, 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 I'm saying, listen, because Roy Hodgson is Steve Parrish's manager. Okay? Yeah. Steve Parrish himself has gone on podcasts with his buddies, Gary Lineker and Jake Humphrey, and he's been on, you know, so he's gaslit fans as well. Okay? So he's partly to blame. I would say right now it is Parrish sort it out or get out. That's, I, but I think first, before the yeah. get out, million it's, percent, it's to sort yeah. it out. But there's Agreed. a guy on here in the comments that's defending Paris to the hill and that we wouldn't have a club, etc. etc. Totally get it. But listen, mate, you live in the past, you live in the past, and that's the problem with a lot of the fans here is that we've moved on from being saved. Brighton were playing at the with Dean, like however many years ago, they were playing in a council athletics track. Do they still think that? You know, do they still look back to them days and go, oh, my God, I'm right. so grateful. No, they're moving forward. Living, right. like, got to stop living in the right. past, man. Hey, I mean, George's- Stan, I, if, if I could quickly on this, because I, I, I think I may surprise you in saying this. I think what the way you put it, I think, is spot on. It is either sort it out or or move on. I still, I think that, I think that Parrish's strategy is right. 
I also think the the it was an absolute disgrace the way that the ownership treated the summer window and put us in this position we're in right now. I think that is absolutely true. And so there have been bad decisions. There has been real dysfunction inside the ownership structure. And I do think, I mean, I, I'm not going to go as far as, as Patrick. I mean, you know, we're out here in Colorado. We can go cowboy too. I'm not going to do that, but I will say that, um, it is fair. It is fair to express this fan base should have a voice, express its displeasure. Nobody with eyes can look at what's happening right now and, and see that things are okay. So I don't believe that I, I don't believe, I, and I've never believed this, that Parrish is toxic, that he's, He's he's greedy and he's taking the club down. I've never believed any of that, but I don't. I I I think it is inarguable that at the moment, and particularly maybe for the last twelve months, there has been a lot of mismanagement all the way up and down this club. But I'm I, I will say I'm I'm with I'm definitely with Patrick in that where I lay the majority of the blame right now is once you made the decision to have a terrible summer window and a thin squad, then that's from that point on, Roy knew what he had. He knew exactly what he had. He comes on the other side of it and told us, and he said, I'm fine. I, it's good enough. And and we can all see. We just saw that that was a miserable, dreadful, draining performance. And if he'd own up, if he'd owned up to it, I would be a lot less pissed off, but the fact that he has gone on to, I'll say it again. Like, I mean, I'm not stupid, Roy. Don't piss on my leg and tell me it's raining. I can see, I know what's going on. Like that's, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. So I'm, I'm, I'm generally, I'm not as parish out as you are Stan, but I think you're spot on in saying it's not anywhere near good enough. Sort it out, or let's let's move on to the next stage. All right. So before I want to bring Dan on, but I don't want to, I want to bring a moment you guys on. But I have a question for uh, Patrick and Tim, and you want to chime in too, Stan? You can also. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you've all been fans for at least the last ten years, right? Premier League, all of you have. I mean, obviously Stan has yeah. been. Tim and yeah. Patrick, you've been right. All right. Yeah. So, in the last ten years, tell me which two managers you mm. enjoyed watching. Football wise, not you like them as a person, but you like the football they played. Name two managers you've liked in the last in our Premier League history in the last 10 years. Vieira called you. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm not gonna say two, I'll say Vieira. Okay, I, Patrick. Uh, I'm gonna go Pardew. Clearly, he was too open. Um, big Sam's counterattack style during that sit that short time he was manager was not boring to watch. Um, okay. especially against Liverpool in those games he won. Um but if I only could pick two, it'd be Vieira and Pardew. But I got I'm, 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 I'm the same way. I would have picked Pardew because I like the open style, but the defensive part was poor. But I'm going to pick Vieira because of the fact that the way that he you utilized and got those younger players, you know, Gehi and, and Olise and uh, Anderson in there to play a different style of football. Because he had to change the style that was Hudson, what we're seeing now, totally different in a year and a half. And I love to play. And then Pardew, like I said, that first year when he came in was brilliant. The FA Cup run was great. The league play was awful. So I just want to get your opinion on that because, I mean, people talk about how we're spoiled and don't think, but it's not like I didn't like other managers. I actually, I like you. I like Pal I like Aladis, his, uh, um counter, counter attack. I love Pulis, just the, just that whole grip. Pulis, yeah, keep us I love the heart and desire. There. Right, that, but yeah. we, we, we yeah. forget Pulis is the Kristen Bowl manager. Exactly. That, yeah. But my I, mindset I, has changed now. Like I'm, 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 I'm way past. I've said to Dia Munyan, I'm, I'm way past staying up. Vieira gave me hope of more than staying up. You know what I mean? Right. That's why, as much as I respected Pulis and Hodgson and Allardyce, it was okay. We're past that now. Younger players playing 2022 style football. You cannot play five in the back or ten at the back. Play for nil nil at halftime. You've got to be on the ball, knocking it around have wide players press like Gallagher again. You know what I'm saying? And that's what 
people would miss. It's not, I, I'm not trying to win an FA Cup or League Cup. I just want to see progressive football. You can compete at, on a, any given day against Arsenal and Chelsea and City. I know every once in a while we beat United or beat City or whatever, but I'm talking about on a regular basis, we could compete. And Vieira gave us that. He gave us that platform. And now this band has taken us back five, six, seven years back to, we're now back to, we got to stay up. Uh, let's keep it tight. Right. Uh, steal right. a one nil. Go to <laughs> go to um um also not get beat more than two or three. It's, it's right. the mindset doesn't work anymore. You know. So right. I want to get you guys on that. So I can that. I add one thing to what you said there, Patrick? Absolutely. Just to back up what you said about Vieira, and I will always. This is I I loved Patrick Vieira. I was very sad when he when he left. And as I've thought about, I've thought about him recently and what what we've been seeing. And one thing. We we're having a discussion in the, the private football chat that we, we have here amongst, you know, lo local guys. Somebody posted there was a, a Twitter thread, something like is Michael Olise better that has more natural talent than uh, Bakayo Saka. And I, I think that's going too far. But what I remembered, just to add to your point, when Michael Olise first came in under Patrick Vieira, he was easing him in. But you he remember what he wouldn't? Right. Remember what he wouldn't do and what Vieira insisted that he get better at? Defending. Wouldn't track back. Wouldn't exactly. track back. He wouldn't exactly. defend. Patrick yeah. Vieira made Michael Elise into a more complete footballer. That is a fact. 100%. Can I, can I bring up one point on Big Sam real quick? Um, I maintain he, he could say what he wants. I think if he would have stayed at the club, we definitely would have been further down the line. I think him leaving kind of hurt because um, he was I, the only I, one. Up, he was the only one up to that point that could get that clown ownership to spend some money with that window. <laughs> um, Good point. But I was sad to see Vieira go. I still think he should have been fired, but uh, we're not going to go back there. Um, yes, yeah, I do. Let's do that. Let's not do that today because I'm gonna. I'll get. I'll get upset. But, and I don't yell at anybody. Him um, and Pat, you want to stay on? Or do you want to kind of put Daniel you know, on? You I, stay I, on? You I'd like to stay on. I'd like to stay I, on. I can stay on. Yeah, I can I stay on. Stan, are you good for like another maybe five, ten minutes? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, because. I've got um, I've got a post here. On... Daniel, you've been in the back. Sorry. Are you, uh, are you can you hear us, Stan? Neil? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, feel free to yeah. speak on whatever you'd like to speak on. And I like that Royale. <laughs> Roy... nice. I like that. Yeah, Royale. Um. I, I seen something on I seen something on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it that Roy hasn't started anyone in our team uh, under the age of twenty one this year, and that's in, that's incredible. No one no one under the age of twenty one has started for Crystal Palace in the Premier League. And if, yeah, I think you're right because that would be the uh, France uh, Wharton today. Rack Saki's, I think, 2021 20, still. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's probably that's factual. Yeah, so guys like – so I, I watch a lot of Premier League football, and I, I watch a lot of games. And I, and I see guys week in and week out, guys under 21, that are making impacts at big teams. Like Kobe Mainu, for example. He's 18 years old. You think he would play in a Roy Hodgson team? Patrick? No chance. No chance. No chance. No Who? chance for ever. Cool. Cool. Man, it's a Man United. Yeah, exactly. Nah, he Man. don't play. You reckon Joe yeah, Pedro yeah. plays in the Roy Hudson team? <laughs> Forget oh, it. Oh, no, definitely not. Definitely not. But it's like you guys were touching on Vieira and, um, and, and, what, and what happened with – like, I think we needed a little bit more patience with Vieira. And, and he should have got – he should have got he, – he, he was a lame duck coming into, into that season because he didn't get an extension. So he was already put he was already put in a bad situation and he didn't get back to the summer. So I, I don't know what we expected out of out of out of out of out of Vieira and they didn't back him either. They didn't so, back him. No, they didn't no they didn't they didn't they didn't back him in that in that second window. They backed him in the first window, but they didn't back him in the second window. So, so Dan, a couple of things. And like everyone let me finish before you before I get pasted in here. With Vieira, listen, I liked him. He's my favourite Palace manager probably of the modern era, OK? The last games were against difficult opposition. There was, I think, three games who didn't have a shot on target. There was the thing with Eze, et cetera, et cetera. But you make the nail on the head. 
he lost Gallagher and we didn't replace him. Patrick, do you remember having that transfer window show back in the day when I was like really disappointed when we did the Decore window? Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah. What I'm saying to you is the coaching staff, Vieira backed his coaching staff. Okay. So fair play. He's an honest, he's an honorable man there. The coaching staff weren't up to scratch, et cetera, et cetera. But what it comes down to is that the moment something went bad at this football club, we have reverted to type. Steve Parrish reverted to type. Okay. So how are we ever, ever going to progress if we just keep reverting to type? And you know what? Steve Cooper will come in. Honestly, it ain't going to get much better because he don't play good football. He ain't done nothing in the game. He's done nothing in the game. Do you know what I mean? Not in the adult professional game. You need a Palace needs a certy manager. Like they need a proper manager that's actually like seasoned and not as old as Roy Hodgson. They need a Lopetegui or an Oliver Glasner or someone like that. Those are the managers that are taking us yeah. forward. Yeah. Stan. All right. Yeah. So I, I know I'm gonna get killed in the chat and I don't really care because I'm gonna people wanna like friends. Here's the good one. Here's the good one. We're writing history with Vieira. This is an interesting quote, okay. I'm going to read again the 12 matches that he went without a win. I'm going to read every match, okay? Lost 4 0 away. Sorry, lost 4 0 at home to Tottenham. Lost 1 0 away to Chelsea. Drew 1 1 at home to Man United. Drew 0 0 at home to Newcastle. Lost 2 1 away to Man United. Drew 1 1 at home to Brighton. Drew away 1 1 to Brentford. Drew at home 0 0 to Liverpool. Lost 1 0 away to Aston Villa. Lost 1-0 at home to Manchester City and then lost 1-0 away to Brighton. Did you hear me name any side below a top eight side from last season? One. No. You hear me name one? One. Did you hear me name a Sheffield United, a Luton type team, a Bournemouth type team, even a Fulham. People always want to go back to how Vieira did the, the, the no shots to go. And I get it. And the 12 games. And I get that. But we played the best eight teams in the league for 12 matches. He didn't lose all 12. He got some good away points, some good home points. So I get people want to bring up the rewrite. We're not rewriting history. The fact is that was the one of the worst runs we could ever have. Hudson's runs this season. He'll never play at any point 12 teams as good as that. And Allardyce and didn't. I went back and did it. Allardyce didn't. Pulis, Pardew. So I, I get people didn't like Vieira, and, and I admit it was it it wasn't great. But to get rid of a manager so quickly, to me, when we had and he knew Parish knew that we were going to have Leicester, Southampton, um, Everton, Bournemouth, Fulham, Forest towards the end of that season. So I'm going to go back and say it again: the reason he was fired had nothing to do with the results. He was. Some of the top players went to Parish and said they did not like the coaching staff. They said they loved Vieira and they asked him to change the coaching staff. Parish recommended a coach and Vieira said no. He was loyal. And then Parish said, okay, the rest is history. You yeah. don't know that story. That's yeah. what actually happened. It was not the 12 game winless streak. It was he they did not like the coaching staff. Not Vieira, him, the people below him working with him. And Vieira said, I'm not getting rid of them. I hired them. I want to keep them. Harry said to him, Are you sure? I want you to hire so and so. And he said <coughs> no. And then he got fired. So Patrick, just to add to that as well, I think that he questioned Parrish's philosophy on transfers. Why are you doing this? Probably Why are you doing right that? Too. Okay. Right and too. rightly so. And Parrish doesn't like that. He is the type of guy, I would imagine, that needs someone behind him whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like behind him whatever. Um, and okay. that's the that's what I'm saying. This is why I can say, look, Hod like Hodgson, come back, whatever. But you fired Vieira... And you had no plan to replace him. And this is where you now find No, us. no plan. There's no plan. If you're firing Vieira and bringing in, again, like I say, Oliver Glasner or someone like that, yeah, 
Absolutely. Like, you know what? You're fine. Like, you're you're good. Like, I'm we're we're good. Like, let's go, right? It's a it's a knee jerk reaction. It's a knee jerk reaction. And, and 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 Tim, I know you're 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 a big um, Steve Parrish fan, and I I listen to Steve Parrish on podcasts. I think he's a very smart guy, very intelligent, and he know and 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 um, but but about Steve Parrish is that he he talks about he wants to build through the youth, but he he brings back Roy Hodgson for a second season. So how how are you going to want to build to the youth academy? And you bring back Roy Hodgson as a lame duck manager uh, uh, for a second season. It's a waste of time. It makes no sense. It's no vision. So that's why that banner is up. Uh, so Roy wants to act like he doesn't know why that banner is is up uh, in the away stand. That's why. Great. Point. That's why. It's a yeah, waste of time. Yeah, and it's uh, Roy's comments on that. I, I I I get that, Daniel. That's and I I my my point only on on Parrish is I think he's got the long-term strategy right and i'm yeah. only thinking i'm only thinking about it from the perspective of the premier league is structurally unfair it's a battle of spreadsheets and yeah. so in a battle of spreadsheets you have very few options for trying to progress forward the option that we have as crystal palace football club is to build organically and and try to get to a strategy where we're always earning but we're not we're not there yet. So I think he's I think he's right about that. But two things can be true. He can be right about that and making bad decisions yeah. or saying one thing and doing something that conflicts with exactly what he's saying. So it is weird. I mean, I like we can't I uh, yeah, it, it's it it is it is deeply frustrating. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So guys, I have a quote here from uh Palace in the know, apparently. It's a guy called Carl. Uh, oh, Patrick. no. All right. Okay. So, I, I'm going to read this quote out. Um, controversial post. If you don't like it, feel free to unfollow. Imagine being a Palace fan, been going away since the 70s, home and away, barely missed a home game and, and away in 20 years. Today, you had to watch that shit show while sat amongst the seaweed, knowing you're partly responsible for letting your own fans down. Before you, before you going to full parish hate. For, sorry, before you go to full hate on Steve Parish. Trust me, he's hurting more than you and me. Well, you know what? That's a good quote. Then fucking sack him. Yeah. If you're hurting more than we are on here, or more than the fan base is, get him out. Yeah. Fair I mean, enough. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Can I bring up the uh, Steve Cooper point? Um, Patrick, you like Steve no. Cooper. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, make make God, make your point. Go ahead. I'll I'll respond. I'm sorry. Okay. You like Steve. Well, it's for you and Stan. You like Steve Cooper, sure. correct? I'm a fan I do. of him. I do. What he did at Forest, the box of the championship, all the way up. Mm -hmm. Stan, how you don't have to like his football, but how at Swansea he played good football. And how can you say that? Yeah. In championship. How, yeah. how can you say he hasn't done anything in the adult game? To pick up Nottingham Forest from the bottom of the pile, bringing them up, then he has to deal with 900 players he didn't want and keep Listen, them up. That's crazy, dude. Actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> at this rate, I'd take Ken Barlow in charge of Palace, mate. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. All right, that's fair. Uh, yeah. So, no, you know what? You know, uh, Pat, that's a great point. Listen, I've always defended Cooper. I've always liked my. I followed him when he did the uh, under 17 side, etc. won the World Cup, and I've always been kind of killed for that. I'm not saying Cooper is a great manager. And he probably wouldn't be my first choice. Mm -hmm. But you cannot, we, we can all not sit here today and not say Cooper's not an upgrade on Hudson. You, we, you, we, we can't. Yeah. We might have said that yeah. beginning of the season as a joke or even two months ago. But today, February, I was in Aruba. Is it today's the third or second? I forgot what date it is today. Third. February 3rd, 2024. You cannot tell me Steve Cooper is not an upgrade on Roy Hudson. And he knows Mark Gay. Remember, he had him at Swansea. He knows some of these players already. So for me, and he'll play young. I'm not saying he play a lot of them at Forest, but he will play younger players because he understands clearly that's his background, youth development. He'll understand that Rack Saki, Admiral next year, Ed Bowie are going to be keys. Wharton, obviously. Do you know what I'm saying? So for they'll me, they'll be key in a championship. <laughs> At this rate, you know, you're not wrong. I, can't, I mean, I can't even argue that fact. I want to yeah. laugh, but I want to cry yeah. too, you know? Yeah. Wrong, so. 
if, if we yeah. stay up, this team, Patrick said it a couple weeks ago, if we stay up, this team's going to have a mass exodus. As, at least say he's already out the door if he still has two, two legs. Two things, um, Patrick, you're right. It's a mass exodus, but not only that, if we stay up next season, let's just say, as it stands now, Southampton leads and lets it come up. Yeah. They were just up. Yeah, they, they, got have they, have start, they, got, they have the background. They're not going to go right, but it's not, it's not a this is not a Burnley or a Luton nah, situation. Nah, nah, They're nah. going to stay up. So squads. who goes down then? Who's is we're we're going to be favorites to go down next season? Yep. Yeah, yeah. One of yeah. The, we have to be right. If yeah. we if we barely stay, but you know at on, at seventeen. So well, if we lose Alise, we're going to lose sure. our best players. We definitely lose Alise, probably as a Anderson. And Anderson wants to leave tomorrow. Regardless. Exactly, Daniel. He's well, done. I think, I think like he he's does done. not look interested at all. I, I think he was having it. He was having it. Was having it was yeah, I seen yeah. it. It was it was disgraceful. Henderson to a pound. Henderson was in there. Yeah, yeah. Henderson needs to shut up. Henderson's new name Real is Henderson. Talk, bro. Real talk. Henderson. Henderson's Henderson. new name is Tennessee, just like Stan said. Two days ago. He is. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Wait, so, Hennessy 2.0? So, no, he's fair, to be, to He's straight. Fair, fair. I'm Wayne sorry. Wayne Hennessy was the worst goalkeeper <laughs> in past history. I'm never going to put Hennessy in there, but I will say that I saw him standing in our group chat. He was, he's been rubbish for like two and a half games. At yeah, least. he has. And the truth of the matter is he doesn't get his ideas bucked up. Thank God we did not sell Sam Johnstone. Oh, look, yeah. Monday oh, absolutely. Yeah. He, he's massively overrated. Uh, he, did, did, hold up. If I'm if I'm mistaken, wasn't he – didn't um, Nottingham Forest um, get that Costa Rican goalkeeper, Neves? Didn't they, didn't they get him to replace him? Yeah, they him? got him for five million, five million pounds. He was, yeah. Yeah, he was injured. They, he, he was, was injured? injured. Yeah, he okay. Injured. He, got he got injured. injured. Yeah, 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 but he never got a spot back, right? And I think with injured, I think was, was injured, the end for the rest of the year. Injured, injured, injured oh, you're talking about last year. You're talking yeah. about Kaylor yeah. Navas. Yeah. Kaylor Navas. Yeah. Navas, yeah. Navas right. right. The guy by, by the uh, – Yeah. Real, Listen, uh, okay. Real, Dean Real, Henderson Real, is not Henderson. one to be giving it to the fans. He's not one to be giving it to the fans after his performances today. And you know what? Anderson, he's been disinterested for about five games. Yeah, absolutely. Dean. Stan, absolutely. And you know Dude, what? I, if you don't I want to be – Oh no! Wait, 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 wait! What's going on? Well, you're not gonna, you're not, you're not going there. You don't. Hey, are you? Dio, are you sitting in the toilet? No, I'm literally. Why would I be in the toilet? It looks like you've got a mirror and tiles. Can I switch the camera? Can I switch the camera? You'd be on the toilet. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. You're in Morocco, correct? On on holiday, right? Yeah. But I can't. I can't tune in from Aruba, but you can tune in from Morocco. Is that how this works? I, I can, man. There's internet here, man. It's not it's not a full work. No, you can made fun of me when I did it on whatever day, Wednesday. You said, "What, what am I doing on the show?" You no, take a break, well, bro. I can tune in. I can tune in. I'm just I'm just outside, man. I'm on holiday. What's going on? What happened today? <laughs> wait, wait. Before, before you do that, hey Daniel. Uh, yo, I didn't know that was you, man. Yeah, what's up, buddy? What's going so on? Is Daniel is a supporter in Philadelphia. Goes to all the games, watches with my son and a bunch of other Palace fans. And I oh, met yeah. him in Chicago for the first time. My great guy. guy. Great, great, great guy. So I didn't realize that was you. So yeah, from Philly. Now. Pat, you from Philly? Where, where are you from in Philly? I where grew up. Well, I, live in, I live in Baltimore, Maryland now, but I grew up on oh, Broad, okay. and Patterson, Broad and Patterson Avenue. Oh, South Philly guy. So, Yo, hell yeah. So, I was in Philadelphia the first 25 years of my life. My man. All right, boss, you're uh, on. Uh, oh, give us your thoughts on today. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stay for too long in it because this club we're doesn't work off, my time. It's not worth my time right now. Plus, I'm on holiday. So I'm just waiting for my food. I thought let me just Dude, go get some shit, shit man. You lot you lot be going on for nearly two hours. I guess there's a lot to talk about from that game. But you I think? mean, first of all, first and foremost, <clears> uh, let's start with let's start with the real issues. Um Hodgson, he hasn't been sacked yet. But even if he does get sacked, I don't think much is going to change in this club. Um, I know some people will disagree with me, but I think this goes that uh, this is way bigger than Hodgson. Uh, in the short term, yes, Hodgson can be a short term fix, but I think the owners and people running this football club is why we're in this position right now. Um, we've seen, I said it, um, you know, all along. Um, you know, Hodgson's not here if we don't give him a year contract. He's been here, he's failed miserably, he is failing, and we're still here discussing about Roy Hodgson and why he hasn't been sacked. Who does that go down to? That goes down to the person that's running the club day to day. If I can blame Roy Hodgson for, for what's going on right now, I have to blame the person who's also in charge of running the football club day to day. Come, brother. Thanks. Thanks very much. Um, 
but um but yeah so oh my yeah, god he's so, getting hand-to-hand uh, service it's wonderful yeah, so, i love so, <laughs> so i think so, so the, the, the problems have been and will be bigger than roy hodgson and see power they should hold, hold his um, head in shame and that's 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 I, and i saw him on the camera i mean the camera panned to him about three four times during the game i watched it i was i was so numb watching the game honestly i was so pissed off um, but um, a shame to him, shame to him for uh, for for us to be in this position. Now, second of all, Roy Hodgson, he ruined every single thing good that he's done to the football club by coming back this year, and he's ruining it right now as well. Absolutely. I mean, to sum up Roy Hodgson and his time at Crystal Palace, you can just look at the Elise situation. He has been forcing Michael Elise whilst he's been injured for the past month or two. That's why Michael Elise can't even complete a game. Michael Elise came on the second half when the game was done because of Roy's ego. For no reason, the game was done. And what happened? No, no. He got stopped off after 10 minutes' time. You look at Twitter, there's comments now being released from, from the club doctor about how, you know, this manager in the past has been, you know, doing stuff like this in terms of forcing my players to play when they shouldn't be playing. And it doesn't shock me one bit. First of all, this goes back to C. Parrish because C. Parrish, you are keeping this man in charge and you're ruining our future. You're ruining some of these players that have great talent in the future. Because if he doesn't get sacked today, trust me, he will eventually get sacked this season because he's not going to get that many wins. So we can say this plain and simple. If, if at least, hopefully, at least his injury is not nothing long term. Hopefully, it's something minor and he has to go off. But we are risking with our future. We need Elise fit. We need Eze fit. We don't yeah. need Elise for 45 minutes when we're 3 0 down against Brighton. We don't Absolutely need him. The game is done and dusted. I don't know what point he has to prove, but it's, it's very annoying how he's, he's forcing some of these players to play. Franca, Ahmada. Ahmada was one of the best players in pre season. Why is Will yeah. still playing as a number 10? I have no Honestly, idea. There is so many prophetic things from coming from this manager that. Once we get rid of him, I think it's going to be a short-term fix. But a long-term fix <coughs> is the owners. And I'm sorry, with the current ownership structure, it needs to change. I have no confidence in them. I only have confidence in terms of them keeping us up. We have a team of Eze, Elise, Gehi, Anderson. Look at Anderson. Look at Anderson this season. He's finished. He doesn't feel like he wants to play. Like It seems like the players have given up. And we still have this guy as our manager. We're ruining our own players. We're playing with their value. This squad should not be trying to stay up this season. This squad should be aiming to do more. This squad should be aiming to look at top 10. We're looking over our shoulders week in, week out with players that we value. We value around 60, 70 million pounds. That's what we say. Why are we looking over our shoulders this much? It goes down to the manager, first and foremost, because he's not getting the best out of this squad. And second of all, it goes down to the owners because, let's be honest, Adam Walton just came in, Munoz came in. But we needed a right back for the last four years. Munoz coming in now, it's great, but we haven't solved that problem for about four or five years. Walton's going to be good, but once again, Walton, or them type of sign is going to happen in the summer. We haven't replaced Tony Gallagher from when we were left. Yeah. So overall, we can talk about this game, but this game is not a shock to me because I came here after the Sheffield United game and I did say, I'm, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I know we won the game. I know we won the game, but that performance was really bad. It was really bad. We we're talking about a side that's got 10 points all season long. And you want me to come to this game against Brian and have high hopes. Ain't no way that's, that was gonna happen. And today it doesn't come as a shock. Brian were the better team, Brian will be the better team. And you know what? Most importantly, Brian have a coach that actually coaches. You see the pans of play, you see the possession. How much possession did we have today? About 28% against Brighton. Are you taking a piss? What type of what levels have we gone down to as this football club that we have 28% possession against Brighton, 3 0 down in the first half, and we're here about three hours after the game and still talking about this manager still being at the football club? Where is the statement? He should have been sacked straight away. Straight away, he should have been sacked. Straight away, Brighton, 3 0 down. Vera got sacked time. after 1 0 against Brighton. And yes, Vera Thank might, you. might have been sacked, but that's a whole different situation. This game alone, he needs to go why is he not gone yet maybe i'm i, I was refreshing I, I was thinking maybe my signal's not that great like i'm in morocco and maybe he's not updating but apparently he's still the manager i'm told i'm still talking to you he's, lot and roy hodge is still the manager he's still here he's still you, here you can't make here. this up and it goes down to the incompetency at the board level it's simple as that until it changes at the top nothing else is going to change simple as that but Look, here we are. I mean, I don't know who we're playing next. I really don't give a toss anymore because it's Chelsea crazy. It's much at home. And, and in fact, Monday. I'm even contemplating whether to go to. Uh, look, I've got a season to go, but I'm contemplating whether to go to the next game because I'm. I, I can't. I, 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 I can't get behind this anymore. Like I genuinely can't get behind this anymore. 
me going there is, is kind of it feels like I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging I'm happy with the situation mm. I can't get behind this anymore I'm sorry I can't it's a piss take we're getting, we're getting a piss literally taken out of us <clears> right <throat> now that's how it feels it's a piss take because there's no way she should be the manager you're right bro you're right yeah. Yeah. listen I just want to say I want to say one more thing guys before I, before I head out um, I, I don't know what David Ozo has to do to get a get, get a run of games. It's it's incredible. Going and, to Belgium. Okay, yeah, like, like uh, Abu. <laughs> <I'll tie laughs> <them around>. And <laughs> Patrick, when you brought that up, I had actually forgotten about Malcolm e. Bowie. Of course like, you did. Dude, Hudson it's, did. it's unbelievable. But it, but um, him bringing on Elise at at, at, at forty five minutes—that's a fireball offense in itself. Like you, you're gone. Dude, dude, that's you. We're talking about a 60, 70, maybe potentially 80 million dollar asset, yeah, that, you, that you're putting on the line for your ego, exactly. Like, it's a detriment it, to this club. Who let him do it, though? He let himself Who, Pat, do it. He let himself do it. Pat. Come on, Pat. He's the manager. Pat. He doesn't have to do that. He, he doesn't have to do that. He did that himself, dude. No, my, wait, what I'm saying, why didn't Paris stop him from even boarding the bus to get there? To nah, that's not the, the owner doesn't. That's not fair. The owners don't do that. That's nah. not fair. Imagine hearing that uh, that the owner said, "Don't put a." Now nah, you can't do that. He's a 76 year old grown man. He knew he knows not to put him on. That's on him. I can't listen. Oh, I just said oh, that. I do, I cannot stand Paris anymore. I'm not blaming him for that. I'm just nah, yeah. that's well, not. That's fair. This manager, any any professional manager with half a brain cell. Would know just don't take just don't take him today. Exactly, exactly. Look, end of the day, look, Roy can go get sacked, but it's about what we do next, right? I mean, January transfer window was fine. We go away. We, I mean, it was a nice window. I'm not going to complain about that. I'll give yeah. him credit for the January transfer window, but the problems are way bigger than that. And I just don't know. I just don't know what's really going to change. I mean, the ambition needs to be shown off the pitch um, first and foremost, and then he has to be shown on the pitch as well. And right now, the ambition not being shown. So. It is what it is. It is what it is. Um, until something changes at the top, nothing's going to really change about Palace because all we talk about is staying up and that's what we're going to be talking about because, you know, that's what our owners want. That's what it feels like they want anyways nope. by, by what we do. Um, well, when you got an owner that's scared to take risks and then when he does take a risk, the first time of trouble, he gets rid of the manager. This is where we're at. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, 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 it went down. I said it before. I think Patrick Vieira exposed the owners at this football club because we we saw we saw with Vieira in his first season, anyways, how when we spend money, when we bring it, bring in young inside players, when we're getting a progressive manager, how much the fans can get behind him. That was the first time in a long time that we've done that. And That's what happened? Point, and Vieira, and, and, yeah. and what happened at the end of Vieira, we go back to Hodgson. It just shows that this is the limit, and I said it all along. I think Steve Parrish's limit is keeping a club up in the Premier League. I don't think he's got it in him to to push us to the next level, and and that's not a bad thing because he's done a great job in terms of keeping us up. But expectations are not going to be just stay up, stay up every single season because it's not right to just expect to stay up every season. We've been in the Premier League for about ten years now. We have to act like a serious Premier League football club and look at the next steps. We've stayed up. Now it's time to look forward and time to push on. And I just, I just, we saw it. I mean, getting rid of Vieira and bringing in Roy Hodgson, and then yes, having him for ten games was all fine. But then keeping him for another season, it just shows. It just shows everything is just Unreal. scary, 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 scary. We're just scared. We're scared to make, to take any risks. If you don't take any risks, you're not going to prosper in life. That's how simple it is. That's how it is, and that's and that's and that's the position we're in right now. But anyway, people, I'm going to go because I need to have my food. I'm going to enjoy my vacation. Uh, thank no, you please stay. In. Stay, nah. please stay. Nah, I've got <laughs> right, no, have a good one, Steve. Yeah. When are you coming back? Uh, I'll probably come back on Monday. We'll probably talk about the game a bit more then, but I'm going to enjoy my time. <laughs> no, we won't. No, we won't. <laughs> we won't. We won't. We're going to move on. All right, buddy. Enjoy the rest of the vacation, all right? All right, then. Take, all right, take care. All right, see you later. See and to, to D's point, and to D's point, we got, we got rid of, we got, we got rid of, um, oh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we, yeah. Go ahead, Dan. Okay. Um, when he's yeah. talking about when he's talking about you got a scared you got a scared manager. I mean you got a scared CEO, and he gets he uh you you see Bournemouth's uh, CEO he gets owner they get rid of uh, Gary O'Neill after he kept them up and he got rid of them because they wanted to progress. Like we're not seeing that in Crystal Palace and, and Steve Parrish. These are some sad Sorry. times, but I've seen everything. This is some. It, sad. it is. Like he, he got oh, rid me... of Gary O'Neill. No, everybody was saying that was a, that was a, that was a bold move, and it's paying it off. And well, it's paying it was, off. It was a risky move for sure, and it took, and they did to their credit. It took them some time to get yeah. settled under Areola. You got to have you do, patience. You do have to, but let me 
say another thing here. I don't. I feel like there there is a moment here where we could end up letting letting Hodgson off off the hook a little bit here, and I don't want to do that because I, I I I mean I hate the gaslighting here. It really pissed me off, and I get that that Parrish is you know I mean fair point. He's he's done that too, but I the the thing that really it is not just that the club operates with with fear. Like you could talk about that with transfers or making the coaching decisions. I'm going to tell you right now, the team that I watched today was playing was set up fearfully and playing fearfully. It's not just at the club. Let's not get lost in that. That was a team that was playing not to lose. That is a team that has been that we've seen that all season. That's a team that's playing not to lose. And when you play not to lose, at some point, you get absolutely battered. And that's what we got. We've been battered two out of three games now. So Arsenal yeah. battered us. We built yeah. an extremely poor Sheffield United team in spite of being playing terribly, having a terrible manager. And now our biggest rivals, Brighton, have battered us. I honestly think yeah. that Parrish is going to really struggle to get the fans back on his side. I think he is because I think he's gone too far Probably. with gaslighting. He's gone too far with not, not telling us the full picture. And he's gone too far with not with bringing in Roy Hudson. And you could argue, I mean, Tanta makes a pretty good point here. Like, I I, I wasn't that against it. I'll hold up my hand and say I, I wasn't against it when Roy came back. But this is a good point. Paris played not to lose, appointing Hodgson. Yeah, I agree. That's that a was fair that point. Was that, was, that was the play. Yeah, that was. That's the a play. fair point. It's, it's Patrick, did, when you big hey, oh, sorry, good. Pat. Can you go ahead? No, go ahead, Daniel. Oh, oh, Patrick, when you seen that lineup an hour before the game, <laughs> weren't you just deflated? Doesn't it just deflate you? Didn't I, didn't you, didn't I put a text in there? Yeah, I think. Did I send it to you when you dude. you had it? You, you don't want to send yeah. it to me or someone else? All right. No, it, it, I said my my. I this is what I said. I said if this is today's lineup, and I put a face where I was throwing up. <laughs> I was sick to my stomach. I was sick. I was sick because I said to myself, having to watch Richard in a three again or as a DM and Will Hughes on the same pitch with Jeffrey Jefferson Lerma is never going to work against Brighton who keep the ball. Like that's what Hambo was saying before. You're playing a team that keeps the ball. You don't want to keep the ball, and you don't even want to get the ball. It's going to be what it was today, seventy percent for them, thirty percent for us. It was a, I, it didn't it didn't Listen. make any sense. I would have, as, as Stan said earlier, I'd have been happy if he just threw in Wharton. Yeah, absolutely. Threw on Ozo, threw on um, France, and said, you know what, Arthur. we'll try those three. And if we lose four one, you know what? I saw some things I liked about Wharton. I liked Munoz's first game. I liked what Francis did. Blah blah blah. And then, as opposed to four one. Third, fourth minute goal, defensive laps are all over the place, no spirit, no heart, putting on our best player currently now and getting injured in the second half. Just too many things today happened that just was absolutely ridiculous. Listen, I don't even listen. It's been almost two hours. I'm done. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. I do want to say, good. Stan, thanks for coming on, my friend. Tim, Patrick, Daniel, everyone in the chat, really appreciate it. Anybody have any last thoughts before we go? Because again, two hours of talking about Palace. One, Brighton, four. I can't do it anymore. I'm done. And he's appreciate the therapy, yet, man. Anyway. Appreciate yeah, the therapy. You know I appreciate you guys. I just wanted yeah, to say same. real quick, Wharton came on, and he was our best passing midfielder. A 19-year-old. 19. 19-year-old. Yep. 19. 19. 19 With vision, pinging the ball around. Yep. I, I, I like him. I think we got somebody too. there. Yep. I just I got do. one I point, if I can. Um, if we yeah. are going to – and we are – make no mistake about it. We are in a huge relegation battle. If we stay yeah. up, it's going to be because somebody made somebody play these kids. Because yeah. I, I think Elise and Eze are done. Great, great point. Yeah, Person. great point. It's because someone made them pay the kids. I agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tim, any last for thoughts? No, I I really appreciate the therapy, guys. I mean, this was this was hard, and I, I it doesn't make me feel good that it it pissed me off so bad. But this, I I, I just. And I, I apologize for for losing it a little bit there. I usually I don't like doing nah, that, listen, but it man, it's, it's fine. It's, 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 it's we needed that from you. You're usually the voice of reason. <laughs> <laughs> we needed that from Dan, you. Dan, any more? Any last thoughts, my friend? Yeah. So Royale and Parish sort it out. 
And I'm just going to say again, I wasn't even upset or surprised at the result. I was only upset post-match when I saw Hodgson's comments. And as Stan just said, and I'll reiterate again, Hodgson has to go. Um, I get that our problems are much bigger than Roy Hodgson, and D's 100% right with the ownership model. But right now, today, this hour, this minute, just get Roy Hudson out and let's go from there because we are in trouble. We are in, we are bang in trouble. We were embarrassed today by our biggest rival. <clears throat> biggest. Thank God I don't, I don't live in England anymore because the banter would be would be terrible. But we lost our biggest rival and it wasn't even close. It wasn't a 4-1 game. It could have been 6 7 8 nil. And things have to change. But thanks to everyone in the chat. Uh, we'll be back with D. And the lads with a preview of Chelsea. Good God, Chelsea next Monday at home. That's not going to be much better. But until Chelsea then, everybody, stinks. again, thanks, everybody. And again, up the palace. Up the palace. Cheers, guys. Up the palace.